<laughs> All right, it looks like we are live. Um, hello, everybody that might be watching, um, whether it's live or later on. Uh, my name is Jared Rasher, which you can probably see from the uh, from the title page there. Um, I have the What Do I Know blog, where I talk about games and geekdom. I am trying to run a few more uh, games on air just to get a better, broader view of some games and get a chance to game with some new different people, which is awesome. Um, I've been gaming since 1985. Um, took a little bit of a break in between there, but yeah, it's 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 been a while and I'm old. Um, today and for the next 10 sessions after this, hopefully if everything goes all right, we're going to be playing Shadow of the Demon Lord, which is a game system that is... Um, the, the best analogy I can come up with is it's kind of a hybrid bastard child of uh, Warhammer Fantasy and uh, D&D. &D. Um, and it's a very dark fantasy setting, so if you are watching this, there could be disturbing descriptions or things coming up, so I'm going to warn you at the offset, there may be coarse language, there might be disturbing descriptions and situations that come up in this game session. So I just want to get that out there right off the top and now that i've introduced you to me and this session i'm going to kick this around steve if you would tell me um let's see we've been playing together since about 2005 yes um I, in a previous stream if anyone watches any of the other things that i've run that are on this channel steve played captain america in my uh, marvel heroic civil war game and Steve, if you would like to introduce yourself and your character, uh, go ahead and kick it off. Yes. Um, so I'm going to be the first one to use course language. So <laughs> I'll, I'll say that out loud. Um, I am uh, playing a prostitute named Abigail Tuller. Um, she is uh, very friendly. We'll just put it that way. Uh, <laughs> That's good in her line of work. It is good in her line of work. Um, but uh, she, hopefully she survives, and if she does, great. If not, well, I I, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as uh, gaming, I've been gaming since uh, roughly 1991, so I'm not too far behind you. <laughs> uh, I, I but I but I but I feel that I'm more ancient than you, but that. that's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's me. <laughs> All right. Um, next up, we're going to go to Ryan. Ryan and I have known each other at least since 2009. We've been in lots of games together. Um, if you are watching this, um, if you're watching this online and you see some of my previous videos in my Marvel Heroic Civil War game, Ryan was Moon Knight. If you have seen any of those things, <laughs> you will know why pointing out that Ryan was Moon Knight is very significant because... Moon Knight, I can't even... Moon Knight basically started a third faction in Civil War, which we refer to as Team Crazy. <laughs> I remember <laughs> this. Look, just because other people weren't using the system to its fullest... <laughs> and, and he essentially... Usefulness. <laughs> he rigged an entire apartment building to take out most of the other Avengers. It was great. So, <laughs> that introduction in place. Ryan, why don't you introduce yourself and your character? Uh, I'm Ryan. I have been tabletop gaming since 2001, a uh, video long before that. I'm playing Teapot. He's a clockwork. Uh, he's a scholar of magical theory, sometime witch hunter, and an acolyte of the new god, which means unlike most people, he can read and write. <laughs> um, he's probably a little more than he seems, possibly with a dash of murder thrown in. Uh, he's had an um, interesting life. And I'm sure more of his background will come out as we play. <laughs> All right. So now let's throw this over to uh, Jason. If you would like to... Uh, Jason, I know from online, he's got a really, really nice uh, podcast about the OSR. I've listened to all the episodes so far. I really enjoy it. I've talked to him a little bit online. This is going to be a new experience because we have not gamed together before, so I'm looking forward to this. And Jason, if you'd like to introduce yourself and your character. Uh, I'm Jason Hobbs. Of um, I do have a podcast. It's called Hobbs and Friends of the OSR. Um, 
it's a podcast, so <laughs> it's pretty new. Uh, so I knew nothing about it when I started, so it's pretty uh, gratifying that anyone even listens, to be honest. So, <laughs> um, my character is Kane Smythe, and not only have I never played with Jared, I've never played this game before. I know nothing about it, really, other than the first 20 pages for character generation. And I did all that randomly, so um, my character is a human saboteur. Why he's a saboteur, I don't really know, but uh, I guess we'll find out. So <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> he's an enigma, apparently. All right. Enigmas are great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's kick it over to uh, Mike. Uh, Mike, also, I have only um, interacted with online, but uh, Mike's got a website. He's got several uh, publishing credits to his name. Mike, why don't you introduce yourself and your character? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> My name is Mike Myler. I do have a lot of publishing credits. I got to do. Uh, I actually got to work on one of the, the warmer 40k RPG books. The last book they made for uh, the Black Crusade line, where you play the evil chaos, chaos lords and stuff. Nice. Because I have all of those and never got to play uh, Black Crusade once. But oh, dude, I love Black Crusade. <laughs> very evil. It's very mean. And uh, I, yeah, I, I, I'm a warmer 40k junkie. Uh, but yeah, I make I make gaming books. If you go to MikeMyler.com, there's 19 now, I think, free PDFs that you can get. And then I also do, like, uh, Marvel Superhero Builds and Pathfinder and D&D on Saturdays. I think Iron Man posts today. And then uh, Street Fighter for D&D on Fridays. So, yeah, go to my website and check it out. Uh, I've been playing games. I had not really thought of it, but now that you guys all said so, I thought about it for a little bit. I think it's 2000. But I was a very young teenager in 2000, so... I uh, know. I was you're like 1985. I was like, what? The fuck? I wasn't even born yet. I don't think I existed. <laughs> God. Well, that's okay. uh, making me feel that much older. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is actually. I was like, God, okay, all right. But uh, yeah, today I will be playing um, Fringe, who appears to be a uh, short human and has nothing of value on her except for a tiny glass cage, which I will tell you is an excellent metaphor uh, for her. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, let's kick this over to Kevin. Um, I've seen several of Kevin's. Uh... <coughs> I am very sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I've seen se several of Kevin's broadcasts online. He's got a YouTube channel where he uh, live streams some games himself, including Shadow the Demon Lord. Uh, again, um, Kevin and I have only interacted online. <coughs> I am so sorry. <coughs> but I'm going to let Kevin introduce himself and his character while I get a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hi all. Uh, my name is Kevin Madison, and I, uh, I'm the host of the uh, Dungeon Musings uh, YouTube channel. I have a blog as well uh, that's really inactive. Uh, I've got some D&D uh, uh, &D 5th edition uh, conversions on the blog that uh, seem to be uh, popular. Um, I run uh, on my channel, uh, Shadow the Demon Lord, uh, a regular Star Wars session, uh, the new Conan game from Modiphius, uh, and then a bunch of other things that I just either press gang my players into or, you know, um, I, I find interesting. Um, I'm going to be playing uh, a Jotun uh, named Vigdis Magnuson, who was a four. He was a thrall, so... He's an ex-slave, and I think he's pretty much an open book in terms of what... Uh, um, what he wants out of, I guess, life, which may be short because we're zero level. <laughs> so that's me. All right. And I, I have my uh, glass of water now, so we won't be getting the rating boost from having me die on air. So this is good. <laughs> All right. So. Jared, Jared, your wife would, would kill me because I'm the closest person in this case. <laughs> If you died on air. <laughs> that is entirely possible. <laughs> okay. So to um, to start out the game, everyone is going to be starting with a point of fortune. Um, for anyone that's um, just as a brief thing for anybody that's not familiar with the, um, with the system, fortune is basically a mechanic where if you spend your point of fortune, you can modify a dice, a die roll. And we'll get into that when people want to, uh, want to use it, but everyone's going to start with one of those. Um, use it whenever you feel that it is most appropriate. Um, 
what we're going to be doing, um, Shadow of the Demon Lord is kind of designed to play uh, 0 through 11th level, and you get a level each session that you play. Um, so we're going to be trying to do 11 sessions and play through a whole campaign, which in this game usually deals with a threat getting worse and worse until either the world ends or you guys manage to stop it briefly for a time until it starts to end again. So um, that's what we'll be doing. Um, um, if you're watching this and you know the rules, you may notice that I'm going to be using the Simplified Fate rules from the Forbidden Rules supplement, mainly just because there's a lot less rolling, and I figured it would be simpler just to go with that instead. Um, we're also going to be using the Abstract Combat so that I'll be establishing how many zones are in an area when combat starts. People will be moving between zones because I don't want to have the uh, the grid posted and all that going on. Um and other than that, I think we're just going to get started. Our adventure is going to be starting in the Borderlands of Terror. This is a region on the outside of the Empire that was beset by cultists and beastmen for the longest time. It was just this, this no man's area that nobody could tame. And at one point, um, the, the Emperor's uh, son that was a complete wastrel do nothing, got sent out here essentially to die by being told, hey, take this token force out there and tame the place. And amazingly, Prince Horus survived his initial forays. He lived long enough to establish, uh, establish a presence there and started asking for, for help and didn't get it immediately, requested help from the... Um, from the province, which is basically completely ruled by the church, and they ended up helping him. And to everyone's amazement, they actually managed to tame a good portion of this region. There's still incursions from beastmen around the edges, but the um, the four keeps and the, the city and some villages in between actually managed to survive and prosper. In the meantime, the orcs, who were a slave race that were being used as soldiers, had an uprising and killed the emperor. So this region is actually more stable than the main empire right now. And what all of the provinces are essentially doing right now is deciding whether they want to throw in with uh, with King Drudge back on, you know, in the empire and swear fealty to an orc, or whether they want to just split off and say we're our own kingdom. Prince Horus has not wanted to commit to either course. He just kind of wants his little region to stay nice and stable. And as far as political situations go, that's probably the most that you guys know about the big picture that's going on. There's a lot of uncertainty about things just because everyone's either expecting, you know, Horus to ride the war and take over the empire and claim his right as the, uh, as the emperor or to, you know, have orcs marching in here any day and murder everybody. So that's the general feeling that's going on in this region. Um, you are currently in a town called Allstone which is a tiny little, not really tiny, it's a town that's in between uh, two of the keeps that's kind of on the border between where the Beastmen incursions happen. Um, the town is relatively prosperous because it does a lot of restocks and supplies for um, mercenaries and knights moving back and forth between the keeps, getting ready to stage outward. Um, and Ulstone has two notable features. There is a huge stone in the center of town and then there is a well on the outside of town. Um, other than these features, Ulstone is basically just known for having people that cater to the people traveling through this region or people that travel through the region. So there are inns and taverns and brothels and you know resupply areas and things like that in this town. Um, what happens... To are you saying Ulstone or Ulstone? A U L U L L. Okay. Great. Thanks. E O N E. Was that U L or A L? U. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now that you know you have that general idea, um, I'm going to basically kind of assume um, Teapot is obviously here, being helpful with you know the the church that's in town because you know he's a helpful guy and he's very friendly. And of course, the Inquisition keeps an eye on everything in in the uh, in, in this area because they the church sent so many people to help tame this region. 
So he's there to keep an eye out on things and report to people that are his superiors. And <laughs> um, the uh, uh, it's probably pretty pretty um, evident why our uh, our lovely prostitute is in town. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Abigail does a, a vigorous business here. Um, so I'm assuming Vigdis is probably here as a mercenary. Um, if you want to have a connection to, does does Abby work at a at a brothel or is she just a streetwalker? Brothel. Brothel. Um, maybe Vigdis could be a, a bouncer there. That would work fine. That sounds good. So. Kane, given that setup, what do you think Kane is doing in Allstone? Well, he does belong to the cult of the new god, so he could be involved in that. I really have no idea what he would have been sabotaging as a saboteur. Um, maybe he is, doesn't like Prince Horus, and he's from one of the other provinces. I'm not sure, I guess, about that, but he can certainly know Teapot from the cult of the new god. Yes, you and Teapot are old friends. This hovering <laughs> this hovering mechanical thing with a face that... that um, uh, I'll let Ryan describe this if he wants, but when it described Teapot as having the 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 almost disturbingly expressive mechanical face, I immediately thought of like the Bay Transformers and all of the way too many widgets making facial expressions on them. <laughs> oh God! This would also mean that Kane knows, since you know we've worked together, that uh, if I ever become an object, uh, in between the wings in the back, there's a panel that has my key. That he can uh, wind and start me back up again. Um, it's kind of a weird misshapen key. Um, <laughs> it's not phallic symbol, right? When you say it like that, you're making me nervous. No, it's, uh, <laughs> if you if you have if you're a scholar of religion, you may know a certain similarity to some uh, cultist holy symbols from back in 50 years or so ago. But um, if you're not, then it's just a really weird shaped key. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Yeah. Isn't, isn't there a, there's a conflict between the church and Horus? Isn't there? Um, the Horus essentially, and it may not be common knowledge, but it doesn't ruin anything for us. Horus basically swore to the church that he would promote the church throughout the province. As yes, I have converted. The Church of the New God is awesome. Horus himself doesn't care. He doesn't like the church as a new God. The church is really pushing him to make more, you know, church oriented laws and structure to the thing. And he's basically saying, Hey, I told everybody that I'm a member. That's enough. You know, just help me keep taming this area. So there's a lot of pressure between the Bishop trying to make this much more of a literal Holy state and Horus basically saying, Hey, I gave you lip service. That's all you guys need. So there's definitely some tension there. And um, this does tie into Abigail a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm are, not exactly a follower there. <laughs> yeah, there are pockets throughout the borderlands where people keep to the old faith, and people like um, people like Kane and uh, and Teapot definitely keep their eye on people like that because they could be overly subversive and ruining all of the great works that have been done with the help of the church in this region. <laughs> I don't know if maybe he's trying to sabotage the. Church of the New God. I mean, it could be anything. I'm not even sure what the sabotaging part is. So <laughs> <laughs> that's just his occupation. I don't know. Uh, well, if you're a saboteur, you could be uh, trying to try given the the idea of the holy state. Bear with me here. Um, <laughs> you 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 could be trying to uh, curb the uh, less than legal activities that are running around town. Mm. It'd be a real shame if somebody had an accident if they didn't properly get blessed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Fringe, what what do you see your place in town being? I think Fringe can't quite remember what she's doing in town, and so she's been hanging out in the area of the brothel, just kind of uh, picking up, uh, trying to get a, a taste for the local folk, and uh, storing as many of their appearances as possible in her brain. Okay. And trying to figure out what she's doing in town. Because she knows she came here for a reason, but <laughs> can't recall what that was. All right. So that sounds like a good place to kick this off. We, we know who everyone is. We know why they are in town, at least in general, at least as well as they know why they're in town. So <clears throat> the night before the adventure begins, 
is very terrible, and most of you, except Teapot, don't remember it very well. Um, you remember a lot of confusion and screaming. Pretty much all of you have had uh, fever dreams all night long. Um, you can remember vaguely, vaguely uh, veiled screams and things of that nature. You don't know if they were nightmares or whether they actually were, ha were happening. Almost all of you can remember like waking up and being violently ill multiple times throughout the uh, throughout the evening, and everything is just like if you've ever had one of those um, one of those dreams when you have a fever, that's what your whole night was like. Just these bizarre, disjointed, terrifying dreams over and over again. And teapot, <laughs> since you do not have normal biological functions. What you know happened overnight was it was just a normal night. There were people traveling through town, stopping at inns, stopping at brothels, doing their business, getting settled in for the night. And all of a sudden, people started getting like violently ill. Um, people were dropping down in the streets. Um, uh, some people were trying to, you know, implore anybody that had any kind of healing arts to find out what was going on, but. Um, what you have done is all of the people here, you are in the remains of the brothel. Um, the brothel itself is basically covered in blood and vomit and anything else that would happen with people being violently ill. Um, the whole place has just been trashed by people panicking and, uh, teapot, you being the fine upstanding servant of the new God and civic member that you are. Uh, you drug any survivor that you could find into this inn, and everyone at this point in time is basically waking up. All of you that are waking up in this inn, um, you're noticing like you're filthy, as if you like woke up halfway through the night and you know, you know, threw up on yourselves, and everything was just not going well, and you all feel very weak. So you now, have damp claws on your foreheads. Yes. So. I will let you guys explain uh, how you wake up in this circumstance. Well, that night didn't go as planned. <laughs> <laughs> um, Abigail will, uh, you know, knowing that she's probably dehydrated, realizing that she'll dig around in her, uh, in her little backpack um, and pull out um, a couple of like uh, salt, uh, tabs of salt from her little healer's kit um, and, and mix it with some water. Okay. Uh, or beer, whichever uh, whichever is more appropriate <laughs> uh, for where they are and, and drink that to kind of do the whole, okay, clear my head, all that fun stuff. Um, give, if you are, so, so as you go to grab the, the water, mm -hmm. um, give me a perception test. All right. Let's see. God. All right. Just a straight perception test. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I got a sixteen. All right. So you get ready to to drink the water, and something smells odd about the water, and you vaguely remember it from last night. It didn't bother you so much last night, but. Um, something doesn't smell right about the water. Oh, that's not good. Mm. Ah, good, you're awake. I have no idea how to handle people with squishy bits inside anymore. Um, perhaps you can help me. Um, okay, uh, robot. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm Abby. Uh, could I have, what, what's your name? I am Teapot. Got it. Short and stout. Got it. Um. Well, short, but. Not so much stout. Makes the flying difficult. Point. <laughs> Looking at the wings. <laughs> um, so the water here isn't right. There's something wrong with this water. Um, is there? Is there anywhere else nearby that we can see if the water is also bad? Because there, there's if it if it smells bad like this, there's potential it could have been poisoned. Smells. Yes. Um. Can't really help you with that one. Uh, there's a well outside of town. Um, I'm sure there's various alcoholic beverages behind the bar. 
And uh, there's probably some blessed water in the temple, but that's really all I know. Okay. Um, let's go for let's go for the alcohol. Um, okay, Vigdis kind of moans as he uh, sits up and says, "No, no more alcohol." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vigdis is a thrall, so he probably hasn't had a lot of liquor before, so. The few they probably set a house rule in the brothel that when he does drink, he has to go outside of town and do it because he can't hold his liquor for shit. <laughs> so Vignus is kind of assuming that he got drunk last night and just doesn't remember. Uh, also, just in case anyone didn't didn't pick up on this, Vignus is a, a Jotun, so he is actually a giant blooded uh, person. So this is like what are you like eight feet tall or so? Yeah. He's nine feet tall. Uh, he, he's fairly thin for uh, for Jotun. If you think of like a D and D frost giant, but like leaner, that's what he looks like. Got it. Um, Vigdis, um, I, I don't think you had alcohol last night. Teapot is only three feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So the Vigdis fact that he looks drunk the Vigdis and this. V Vigdis looks around the room and kind of narrows his eyes like. He's not quite sure, but he knows that he should normally listen to Abby, so he begrudgingly kind of, all right. And then sloth, you know, gets up and starts cleaning up, I guess, what he can. All right. So, so Fringe and... Uh, fringe and... Uh, I am sorry. Um, uh, fringe pain. is going to look around and, like, try to uh, resuscitate people. "Quote unquote," and like <laughs> anyone who is not <laughs> okay. resuscitating or waking up, and you know, like being you know, she's not gonna like get their mouths or anything. She's just gonna shake them, uh, and really, she's just using the opportunity to like look for loose change and take it. <laughs> I was just gonna say, whenever someone says resuscitate and then says "quote unquote," <laughs> it makes it makes me want to ask for clarification because that can be a whole lot of. <laughs> yeah, 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 sorry, that's okay. <laughs> Okay, so you guys start seeing uh, Fringe kind of uh, rummaging through the uh, room and moving again now. And Kane, what are you doing? Um, Kane feels like maybe everyone was poisoned, so his first uh, instinct is to check the well because that's what he would have done if he was trying to sabotage the town. <laughs> so <laughs> he'll mention that to uh, Teapot that we should uh, go check the well. Absolutely. Absolutely. If I can, you know, get active enough from the poison. Um, all of you get the feeling as you're um, you're getting up and stirring now that um, because you've been sick all night long and you're, you're coming out of it now, but you do get the feeling that if you don't get some fluids into you, you might be um, operating less than optimally. So should you want to go on at this point without drinking anything else, um, you'll make a strength challenge and you might be fatigued, which will mean you'll be taking a bane to everything. Otherwise you can try and find something to rehydrate yourselves. And I will leave that up to you with how you want to proceed with trying to rehydrate yourself. Obviously teapot does not have this problem because you know, for uh, everybody who, well, uh, Kane would know this, but for everybody who's just meeting teapot, uh, he's very friendly, but there's something just slightly off in game terms. He has to take a, or a uh, bane every time he interacts with people socially because he has corruption. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah, it's like adults seem to deal with him okay, but you know the the weird facial you know things kind of freak people out from time to time. But literally, like children and animals stay away from him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Got it. Um. A Abigail is going to rummage and see if there's anything that uh, would not be poisoned. She's going to kind of look around the, the inn to see if there's something that's not the water that was being served. Okay. Um, something maybe sealed. Um, so because it is daytime, but, you know, windows are partially shuttered. So since you're making a visual check, um, this is partially concealed light. So you will take one bane to search around for something to drink. All right. Well, given uh, given her uh, her profession, she knows at least uh, where the service will be. Um, well, that's that's just awful. Um, 
So my one, uh, my D20 was a 15 minus five from my vein. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, still, 10. that's yeah. still 10. Yes. Yeah, you got a 10. That's fine. Every, unless it's an opposed roll, all DCs are 10. Oh, okay. <laughs> I missed that part. <laughs> yeah. Unless the only time that it's not 10 is basically if it's going up against something like somebody else's uh, armor or something like that. Mm -hmm. But normally it's just a 10. The way you set difficulties is giving people a certain amount of banes or boons. So. Got it. So let's roll on the handy chart of drinkable liquids that we have here. Hey, a six. So you found enough for everyone to drink, but the downside is it's all ha hard spirits. <laughs> well, you like to keep looking or would everyone like to rehydrate themselves? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I'll keep looking because I think that I don't want to give Vigdis hard spirits. <laughs> Vigdis has the look right now of like a puppy wanting a treat. <laughs> <laughs> um this one I, I again i rolled a five on my bane uh okay. but i rolled a 17 so on nice. the d20 so i'm nice. still good <laughs> okay so so this time uh you managed to find um beer or ale which i can live with beer for breakfast yeah that is not quite as um you you won't be making the strength challenge with two banes the way you would have with the uh, <laughs> trying to hydrate yourself with uh, hard spirits. With spirits, um, and and adding you know a couple of the things for uh, helping wake up out of the healer's kit, uh, the salts the salts things to it. It'll taste terrible, but it, it should help us help hydrate too. All right. So is everyone drinking the uh, drinking the uh, the beer that uh, she has found for you. Oh yeah, Vigdis drank it while Abby was looking for the salts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vigdis, never mind. <laughs> never mind. <sighs> so, assuming everyone gets nice and hydrated, you're feeling a little bit better now because you've got some fluids back in you after your night of horrible things going on. And as you guys are drinking and starting to relax, and Kane mentions that you guys might want to check out the well, or at least he mentioned it to a Teapot that you might want to check out the well because you think it might have been poisoned, you hear a at the at the door of the brothel. Oh, good. Yeah, I thought we were in the inn. <laughs> well, it's it's the fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, of looking to see what's who's out there. Okay. Is it like the like the little like slot, like the speakeasy slot, or <laughs> yeah, we I yes, um, we we will say it's got a little wooden slide in the in the door, so you yeah. slide this open. Um, Vigdis, you probably don't recognize this person. It's a a woman in her middle years wearing some kind of formal robes with some kind of symbols of whatever stupid deities they worship in this part of the world because you know. You're not from this region originally. <laughs> so I'll just turn around and say to Abby, Abby, fancy lady. Head, uh, head into my palms, uh, uh, face into the palm, and, uh, well, carry my beer with me uh, and uh, answer the door. Okay. So you see standing before you, um, it's a very matronly woman in formal robes of the cult of the new god. Um. She is, for everything that, in Teapot, you pick up on this, for everything that happened last night, she is remarkably clean. Yeah, that, that does not make me happy at all. Uh, but that, that's another story. She, she walks in and she goes, oh, it's you. You're from this establishment, aren't you? Um... Uh, yeah, mind, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm around here. Yes, it, it's all right because you were in the dream. So everyone here has a purpose, and that is wonderful. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. I am Mother Bastion, and the new God has seen fit to send me a dream about all of you. Horrible, horrible things have happened overnight, but I know each and every one of you are especially chosen by by the new God 
to fulfill his glory, and that's why I've come here. You must help right the horrible things that have happened in this town. Of course, Mother. <laughs> um, you do know what I do for a living, uh, Miss Bas Mother Bastion. Yeah. Yes, I know, and the new god has shown me you in a dream, so I know that you will be redeeming yourself because you have been chosen especially by the one true god. Does anybody have religion as a tr as a, uh, a trained religion skill? No. That didn't come up in slave school. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, yet. <laughs> I don't think we have any skills. I don't think any of us have skills, right? Uh, it'd be under... Uh, your profession. Yeah, it's it's your profession. Yeah, if your profession right. would give you knowledge of that thing, then you get a. a oh, okay. So, the, all right, I'm a tracker, so no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, of the new god, inquisitors, henchmen, scholar of magical theory, and yeah, oh. teapot. Give give me a test with, with a, <laughs> one boon. Uh, what kind of test? Uh, intelligence. Oh goody. <laughs> Uh, there's no banes. Let's go here. That, okay, apparently I didn't want to roll the D6 part. Oh, it did. It just didn't show me. Oh, okay, so that's a one. So that's five. Woohoo! I know nothing. Teapot is just very happy to see a representative of the uh, cult of the new <laughs> And I'll stay, step, stay skeptical. <laughs> so she tells all of you, I I dreamed about you, and she, she looks at Big Dis, and I dreamed about you, and she looks at Kane, and she. I, I dreamed about you, and she looks at Fringe, who is kind of in the corner, and nobody's really noticed Fringe quite as much as everyone else in there. And I definitely dreamed about you, and she points at Teapot, and then, I, and I, I, I even dreamed about you, dear, and she kind of pats, uh, pats the, the prostitute's arm. All of you have a special place in the plan of the one true God, and you're going to help reverse the horrible thing that happened here over, over the last evening. So the Jotun have this concept of the weird, which is kind of like fate or destiny or whatever. So I think Vigdis is like trying to like process this in through that lens. <laughs> this lady says, this is my weird. Yes, you have a greater destiny. This is why you were a slave and then ended up in this place way far away from your home. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Makes sense to me. <laughs> and... and, and, and Abigail is uh, looking at at Vigdis, kind of going, uh, making this realization, and, he's, and she's just raising her eyebrow and just going, way too innocent. Ah, uh, <laughs> looking at Teapot, going, okay, he's happy to see her. Ah, uh, gonna assess the others. How, what's their uh, what's their feelings towards the apparent holy person in the whorehouse? <laughs> Fringe is going to like uh, edge up towards. I assume there's more than one story here, so she's going to edge up towards like the stairway to the second story mm -hmm. and uh, be like, Tell us, uh, what uh, what did you dream of us? I'm uh, most curious to know. So you kind of retreat back to the stairs a little bit further so you have a better view of everything and trying possibly. to look casual about it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is, is Kane. Uh... How's Kane reacting to all of this? Well, I mean, he's obviously in the cult, so uh, it's interesting to hear. I mean, has he ever seen anyone do anything like this or talk about Destiny previously? Oh, no, no. And actually, she seems a lot more like the, the local priests that you have had around here have been a little bit more like basically either local converts or people that have been part of the faith for a long time. They aren't super formal it's just sort of like oh yeah the new god's great he wants us to be nice to each other that's that's wonderful and they haven't been you know the 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 really zealous or the or even the really formal types and she's definitely much more of the the formal true believer type at least you know from initial impressions here well kane's pretty malleable so he's just gonna wait and see probably okay so she she turns and addresses uh addresses Fringe, and she goes, well, what I saw was there was a great, there was a shadow, and the shadow was, was growing across our entire province, and I saw each one of you bearing a light, a light given to you by the new god, and when you stood close to each other, the light grew, and it pushed back the shadow, and I saw each of you, your faces very clearly, and then last night, um, 
most of the town died. So I know that you must be the people that the new god wanted me to come to. Wait, 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 wait. Most of the town died? Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, you may want to brace yourself if you walk out the front door. It is horrible out there. Um, what, um, it, it seems that, do you know, you know the large stone in the center of town? Yes. The, the stone was moved and there was a chamber beneath the stone and apparently people came out of this chamber and when people were sick, they drugged them off and started, um, uh, doing wretched, horrible things to them. In fact, the local church has been taken over by rather unpleasant people in robes. Oh, that won't stand. Uh, Vigdis says to the fancy lady, you should do something about that. No, the new god, the one true god, wants all of you to do something about that. Oh, he <laughs> nods knowingly. And she, and she goes, now I shouldn't be saying this, but if you would do this for me, I know that the new god will lead you to want to do these things out of the goodness of your hearts, but there is an alms box in the church, and even though it was supposed to be going to Midkeep to help uh, help out some of the refugees, if you would like to take that, uh, that, that box as payment, I would tell you personally that even though it may have more altruistic uses, you can clearly feel free to take that if you wish. Steve, I think one of the lessons that Abby probably taught Vigdis that he's uh, managed to carry with him is you pay before you play. So. <laughs> yes, 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 very true. Um, <laughs> so, so we're going into the church to take care of these horrible robed people. And then we're going to steal the alms box for the poor and the refugees. I don't think that's quite very moral, among other things. And you know what I do for a living, dear. It, um, you know, it, it's very odd, because one thing that I have learned from, from all of the, the many bards that I have encountered in my lifetime is that any story can sound terrible if you put it to the wrong music. <laughs> this is an uh, opportunity. <laughs> You do realize that at this point we are the orphans, destitute, and poor of this town, yes? Yes, you should listen to the mechanical so, beat. So, so, so the alms would technically be for us. Yeah. I mean, the rest are dead anyway, so they don't really have use for it. <laughs> Except these random, horrible people wearing the hooded robes. Mm. Oh, they die. No, they're in the church. That's where we're going. Oh, don't worry. You see... If you just want to get, um, if you just want to take the payment, the um, if you go inside, there's a room off to the side. I can give you the key, and the alms box is in there. If you don't make a ruckus, you can probably get in there and take the alms box without them even noticing you. What I actually need you to do, um, down in the chamber in my dream, which I have no reason to doubt, there is a there's a blot, there's a thing that is dark, and some form of magical radiance or fire needs to get rid of that blot. That's what the one true God has revealed to me. So if you could go down there and get rid of that blot, then everything would just write itself. Where do um, we find magical fire? Yeah, that's uh, the next question. <laughs> um, Kane? <laughs> yeah, I might be able to help with that. I think it's important. We should actually try and help out. Hmm. Well, if everybody's That's dead funny. anyway, it looks like we're going to have to find a new uh, a new uh, home, so to speak, Vigdis. Mm, he sighs and then grabs his big staff that's always waiting by the door. Yeah. <laughs> Vigdis' case is probably like a small tree. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> A big sack full of uh, a bottle of glue and some random crap. <laughs> um, Abigail, since well, since we're at the uh, at her uh, place of work, she goes and grabs her backpack out of the uh, out of her little bin, um, and uh, grabs her rope. Mike, what does Fringe look like? 
Uh, she's homely looking. She's not much. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say dwarf necessarily, but if you saw a regular person that wasn't technically like you know little people, and they look short and stocky like that. Okay. She's got uh, what you might, if you're feeling friendly, call a swimmer's body, that had been kind of let go. And uh, a compacted swimmer's body. Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah. You all look small to me, anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> She is, does have some familiarity with the Inquisition. Are these? Is this woman affiliated with the Inquisition, or is, is that a separate part of the church? Um, the the Inquisition is very common in this region, and yes, they are much more formal than the rest of them. Um, make uh, give give me a intelligence challenge challenge roll. Plus zero, and it's just one d twenty. Uh, oh, 19. All, All right. right. Yeah, you get the feeling. Um, first off, the first thing that, that strikes you that no one else has quite picked up on yet is this. I mean, and, and it's possible because people travel between the keeps and stop in this town a lot, but she is not from the local clergy at all. Um, and on top of that, the robes are very similar, but not identical to the Inquisition. But it is not like... It's not the robes that the the standard, um, the the standard priesthood would wear. This is definitely something of some specific order, that is probably somewhat at least like the Inquisition that she's wearing. Okay, I will uh, bring that up. I'll <clears throat> I'll ask. Uh, you have traveled far, have you not? I do not recognize you from the local, the local clergy, and I am a woman who pays uh, her services to the deities. Oh, oh, no, no. I am not from here. I was just traveling through because, um, actually, uh, I was part of, I was part of, uh, Sir, uh, Sir Regis Morn's, uh, compliment that was traveling through here. Uh, Sir Regis was a, uh, is in service directly to, uh, Prince Horace. And, um, Sir Regis was doing a, a, Tour of the various keeps to, to assess their combat readiness because there's been trouble at some of the keeps recently. And I was in his retinue making sure that everyone's spiritual needs were being taken care of. And we stopped here for the night. And um, I have not found Sir Regis's body among the, uh, among the dead. But unfortunately, the rest of our entourage uh, did happen to fall prey to whatever it is that happened to everyone else. They just kind of gestures out to the bodies. Are there bodies in the in the street and stuff like that? Like, is there um, carnage if, outside or what? If you look out the door, um, it um, this is I, I will ask since you you looked out the door first. How hardened a person is Vigdis? <laughs> Vigdis was a slave to a really horrible raiding and you know butchering race, so. So, a few so here's the question. If you would like to take a point of corruption for being extremely jaded for having seen terrible things, you won't need to make a roll for the scene that you see outside because this isn't just like bodies in the street of people that died because they were poisoned. There yeah. are people like nailed to buildings with like pots underneath them where they were being like drained for their fluids out of their bodies. And yeah. you know, this is like yeah. across the entire town. Yeah, that point of corruption is on the character sheet now. So okay. he'll, he'll just gesture to what's going outside. He says, is this the trouble you had at your keeps? Uh, well, I mean, the, the trouble that was going on at the keeps was more the Beastmen activity was, was starting to increase a bit more. But I have to believe that, you know, the forces of darkness are, are able to array themselves in multiple different ways. I haven't seen the robed figures the rogue people in the church uh yes they have very i mean they're very nice robes actually i mean they're they're dark but they have like uh they're they're black and gray i mean they're actually quite quite fetching but <laughs> <laughs> and they have these gilded masks and it's 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 very disturbing and yet at the same time i feel that they they must have some some decent tailors working for them <laughs> Her two professions are Inquisitor and Fashion Maven. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 
she's just hitting me wrong every which way. This just feels <laughs> like we're being herded to a trap. Um, is anyone else looking out the door when uh, Vig just looks out to see that scene out there? Fringe is curious. Yeah, so yeah she'll look. Uh, okay. She'll probably be looking. Friends. Yes. Um, also, first off, Teapot. Yes. I would ask you whether you want to take another point of corruption, but I think with you starting with what was it, four or, or three? <laughs> Five? Okay. <laughs> yeah, this scene does not bother you. <laughs> so I've seen worse. <laughs> you neither need to take corruption nor need to make a check to see whether you take insanity from this. It's just like, oh, this again. The random <laughs> rolls were not kind. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so, um, Fringe, would you like... Uh, is Fringe the type that's jaded and has seen some, some horrible things, or is she completely new to this sort of thing? We're going to find out whether she has a flashback right now. <laughs> Be, well, what I'm going to say is, if you want to take a point of corruption, you don't need to test to see if you take uh, take a point of insanity. No, that's what I'm saying. If she succeeds on the check, yeah, I, I, will, I will test for insanity. Okay. So it's a will roll? Uh, yes, it, it's a will test, and you will take one bane to it. One bane. 1d20 minus 1d6. Oh, I failed that. I got a four. Okay, would you like to take a point of corruption and just, you know... <laughs> no, it's cool. Let's go with the insanity thing. All right. Nice. <laughs> oh, dear. That's I got a one of point of insanity. Too. Is that... And Sandy becomes a one? Yes. All right. Just one for now. We're all a little mad here. It's well, Fringe, we'll okay. look outside and see the uh, the bloodshed and everything, and then I'll remember a moment in her past that was not unlike this that happened in a dungeon that she <laughs> barely escaped from. And uh, she will start to gibber a little bit, and when drool, like, drips out of her mouth uh, and, like, hits her hand, she... She sort of like shakes her head left and right, like jittering, and uh, then quietly moves back to where she was standing by the stairs. <laughs> All right. Um, is anyone else looking out the front door now that a couple people have peered out there? Uh, as soon as I see, um, as soon as Abby sees Fringe kind of start gibbering, um, she she goes and grabs one of the blankets from the uh, from the brothel and and tries to be comforting. Oh, yeah, like, think... oh, that's not good. This is not good. <laughs> Fringe just... throws oh. your, your blanket away, like lashes out with her arm, which for a moment appears to like it gets gets all Popeye, you know, like big and like, she just had the spinach. But uh, then when it comes back to her robes, it's back to like the womanly womanly swimmer's arm. Got it. <laughs> That's yeah. not this takes that in stride and then just offers her the leavings of his uh, beer, his morning beer. <laughs> um, I'm going to guess that it's not pretty outside. <laughs> oh, no, it, it is quite wretched out there. Shakes her head left. You know, no, no, no. And, okay, so I'm watching Fringe's reaction here. Vigdis, I, Vigdis is strange anyway, so I, I get it. Teapot's a robot. <laughs> Um, and I'm watching this woman who's walked into our area here, our, our little whorehouse, and she's perfectly happy and giving us fashion advice. Yeah. <laughs> I think that what is wrong present, with you, lady? <laughs> the clear and present danger stands before us. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pretty short adventure. We just kill her. We're level one. <laughs> So, so I can count on you to to go erase the, the this block that's down in the chamber, because the one true God has has sent me to you to send you to do this task, correct? You know, if we go and kill the guys in the church first, because they're desecrating the church, we'll have disguises to make it easier when we go down into the hole. Ooh, you make, you have a very good point, and. If you would like to, if you happen to go into the the vestry and there's anything in there that you might want to uh, to take for yourselves, feel free to use that as well. I am giving you permission to sack anything valuable in the church. Okay, v Vigus is is just not bright enough to be able to make this uh, uh, this connection. But do you think any of your guys might 
uh, notice whether these robes fit her properly or whether she like murders someone and is wearing this. Like, <laughs> hey, go plunder the church. Yeah, that this just doesn't sound right. I I, I think I'm going to take Victus up on that <laughs> on that thought. So, so does anyone have like a if you're going to like try and see if the robes were tailored for her, does anyone have any um, like tailoring related? Do you understand how much sewing a prostitute has to do? <laughs> sewing and tying people up. I mean, it's two of the big professions. Any anyone can make an intelligence uh, test for this, but if you have a profession that has anything to do with clothing, then you could do that with a with a boon. Well, would a saboteur have some knowledge of subterfuge like this or something? Yeah, that sounds. Like that, that that would and I, I think there's nothing more humiliating in a warrior culture than a thrall doing needlework. So I think that would be a profession I have. <laughs> <laughs> so when I make a test, what do I have to do? Roll a 20 and a D6 because of the boon? Is that what you said? Yep. And then add the result of the D6 to the D20 and plus your intelligence. And if it's higher than 10, or if it's 10 or higher... My intelligence being the intellect? Yes. Oh, sorry. So, I'm sorry. Multiple game systems in my brain. Isn't, my intellect's already higher than 10, though. No, no, no. Oh. It's intellect minus 10. So you, if like your oh, intellect okay. is 11 or better, you add 1, 2, 3, so on. Yeah, um, okay. Um, yeah, you just subtract 10 to see what your modifier is. I rolled, oh, okay, nice. I, I, without a profession skill, I rolled a 10 on the... I, I rolled a 10. I rolled a 9 plus okay. one my intellect. Yeah, I got a... 12 13 yeah so so anybody that get that made that check you these robes actually look impeccably tailored to her hmm. does she seem like an actual i mean right now she doesn't seem to be acting like a high priest of the new god to me because obviously the, the high priest wouldn't want us trash in our own church yeah that's that's what's so suspicious about it now that I'm insane, do I see a glint of insanity in her eye <laughs> <laughs> That I recognize. Um, give me a perception challenge to see if you you recognize the same insanity in you. <laughs> Twenty plus one insanity perception, and we get a fifteen. Um, actually, when you're looking at her, she she seems odd, but she doesn't seem as if something is nagging at her mind. This just seems to be how she is. Oh, but teapot does. <laughs> 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 um, the Kane and Teapot, do, you two would know though. The Inquisition works a little different than the common clergy because they are so worried about rooting out, you know, cultists and and evil. And they do, to some extent, think that what they do supersedes the normal rules of the uh, of the church. It could just be that coming through in her actions. So as an Inquisitor's henchman, I'd be pretty good at, or, you know, pretty okay with what she's telling us, because kind of standard operating procedure. Well, Kane is most interested in getting rid of her and then going to the church, so whatever, you know, that's what his vote is, and that's what he would be wanting to do. Oh, this is... This is just unpleasant. <laughs> does King, like, does he say that in kind of a "this is what's happening" kind of like matter-of-fact way? Yeah, I've decided that he was trained as a saboteur and maybe saw some bad things and decided that now he wants to redeem himself, and so he joined the cult of the new god. So that's his main uh, motivation, really. And so if we can do this, and the new god obviously said we're supposed to, even though he might be a little skeptical because he's been around it, but maybe hasn't seen. Uh, maybe hasn't been enlightened or had that revelation yet, but really wants to. And so if this is going to happen, then that would be his, uh, obviously what he would want to do. So if he can convince anyone else to go with him, he would certainly be interested in trying to do what the crazy inquis inquisitors wants us to do. So Vigus is easily swayed. So <laughs> Teapot's ready to go. He brushes uh, Abby on the shoulder and gestures to, uh, to Kane is like, Hmm. The prince says that the Inquisition always knows what is right. So. <laughs> oh, this is, the there is no other choice. Um, That's very comforting, Fringe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I don't trust any of this, but given that the town's apparently dead, I, I, I guess we don't really have much of a choice. I think we, if there is something bad in the town, we need to prevent it so it doesn't spread. Oh. <laughs> All we right. Stay so here. We will go. This is important, Abby. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, Miss they just, kinda, they just pats on the, on the back, Abby, and says, I'll protect you. <laughs> Miss, Miss Teller. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is going to go. This is going to go poorly. <laughs> I, I'm no trained warrior. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I've got my stuff. Let's uh, let's see if I go insane when I look out the door. Um, so, so here's the question. There is the front door where the, the priestess came in. There is a back door to the alleyway. And so two questions. Which way would you like to leave the building? And are you heading towards the church? Or are you heading towards the the stone that apparently has a chamber beneath it? Or the well, because you mentioned the well earlier. I think the church, uh, Kane said the church first. I think so. Let's see who these people are inside the church. And is 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 one? Is there like a way we could get to one that we wouldn't have to maybe go through the main streets or we could, you know, keep hidden from whatever these robe dudes are running around? Yeah, that would be my specialty. The there yeah. should yeah. be enough alleyways because, well, you know, I have to run away from the guard every once in a while. <laughs> it's a hazard of the profession. Um, so I should have a route around various places uh, planned out. Just yeah, if you go through the the alleyway, um, I will, I will let anyone that well anyone can make this check. Anyone with a criminal profession, hi, could uh, <laughs> could make this with a a uh, a boon to see if you can plot a good way through the alleyways to the church without having to see anything horrible or exposing yourself. And that is uh, awesome. <laughs> is this intellect? Um, yes. All right. Gopher plus 19. Okay. I have a 20. <laughs> wow. Uh, I have a 19. So we have three criminals here. So <laughs> Yeah. So between your three criminals, um, I'm going to say with all three of those checks, you can probably figure out a way from the alleyway to the church, the well, or the or the stone in the center of town without being seen. So you guys, between the three of you, you know every alleyway and every way to do this. And you also, the part of the benefit of this is you can avoid anybody that hasn't already tried to look at these horrible things. You can avoid looking at these horrible things because you know these alleyways as well. Uh, Teapot is, has learned in his years that no one looks up. So Teapot is going to actually be slightly ahead of the group on rooftop because <laughs> um, he can fly, and if he nice. notices a large mass of dead people or the like, he'll kind of indicate <laughs> that maybe you should go that way to help keep people sane. Uh, the, uh, the 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 second floor, third door leads out to a rooftop. You, if you want to go that way, and I will meet you out back. If you okay. fly, did you want to maybe reconnoiter the the church before we? Uh, um, I'm many things, but I'm not subtle. So. <laughs> I don't know why Teapot would... will happily take a look uh, that's, I, he... A tall guy is not subtle I... <laughs> I want to see if he I can would... find a weapon Maybe like a I don't know, cleaver or Butcher knife or something um, uh, Inside the place uh, Give me, since it's still kind of Somewhat poorly lit and um, Give me a perception check With a bane Teapot will scout the church, but he's going to wait until everybody else is within running distance to get there quickly in case he gets spotted. Okay. Oh, so that was bad. I didn't make it. All right. So, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, you can find things, but I mean, what, what did you start out with? A sling. Um, you can probably find, like, a little knife or something, but it's not, like, an impressive weapon. It's going to be, like, a, a D3 could uh, could Vignus break a chair just to give him a club? <laughs> um, yes, but give me a perception check to see if you pick something that's going to withstand your strength and hitting someone. <laughs> this is not going to go well. <laughs> All right, I rolled. Oh, I rolled eighteen, so I got a sixteen. All right, so 
I'm picturing that Vigdis figures this out by basically breaking a bunch of chairs that are already partially broken until one of them seems like, well, this one, this one survived. <laughs> um, okay, Vigdis. <laughs> All right. I also have a box of iron nails. Can I like hammer some nails through the club? You could do that. Um, do you have any kind of crafting? Uh, oh. <laughs> I have a box of glue. Tier. I have a bottle of glue. Do you want to glue your nails to it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I will let you use your saboteur check. Um, give me a challenge roll. We're going to make this a spiky club. Oh, that's pretty good. So, is it intellect? Wow. Um. Yeah, we'll say. You're, you're planning to make a spiky club. <laughs> so, 23, 23 then. We will say that you can turn the, the piece of wood with the spiky bits into... Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, I am very sorry about that. <laughs> Trying to find a good spiky bit stats. Okay. So your spiky bits thing will be. I'm going to say that since this is improvised, though, it will last for a scene. Okay. But we will count this as. You know what? Since it's only going to last for a scene, we will let it count as a morning star. All right, cool. Nice. <laughs> So it does 1d6 plus 2. But then after that scene, the, the nails fall off and it breaks. <laughs> the room is full of chairs and Vigus is more than happy to go to work. <laughs> so, 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 so Fringe, you, you did notice though there's a bag of iron nails that was getting passed around the room there. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of iron. So I did not touch it. Which is funny because normally, you know, completely human beings are <laughs> fine with, with iron, but you know, I have some, no need for iron nails. So some humans just don't like iron. It's it, it's a thing. It's completely natural. <laughs> right. I think they're called ferrophobes. <laughs> yes. Nice. Okay. So everybody ready to head out there then? It, yes. It's is Fringe a member of the Inquisition or the Inquisitor's henchman as well? Uh, she. I, I don't want to reveal exactly what she did for the Inquisition, but she. They have a relationship. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> uh, just since uh, I just wondered if there was any connection between uh, Teapot You're and. You're a saboteur. Fringe. No, he was. He's a, a Inquisitor henchman. Uh, he helps with witch hunting in particular. Yes. Possibly Fringe Fringe uh, was uh, an informant out in the wilderness. <laughs> so they may have had dealings. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking Although at Fringe this doesn't I'm remember this them, is not so. going to go well. Everybody's okay. cult of the new god but me. <laughs> oh, oh no. no. <laughs> Vigus is not a fan at all. <laughs> <laughs> but Much appreciated, <laughs> Vigus. <laughs> the, the little bit of cleverness that Vigus has learned to survive is like he constantly calls out his chance to the dark gods in trollish. And when anyone asks, he's like, it's a prayer to the new god. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Duly noted. I did not catch that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, okay. okay. If you guys would like to head to the church, um, Teapot can scout it. You guys can stay, like, in the alleyway, and Teapot will make a stealth challenge roll to see what, what he can see about the church. Uh. Any chances with a boon since he's uh, above shoulder height and most people don't look there? You know what? I will give you a boon. Also, um, not only will I give you a boon for the height, but I'll give you a boon because it's broad daylight and you're looking into the church. Okay. So it's a little easier to fly from window to window and look in as it's shining in. All right. Uh, so that'd be a 20. All right. So nice. what's your 20? You notice that a lot of the church is kind of shrouded in shadow, almost to the point to where it's darker in there than it should be. Um, some of the windows are 
you know, there's definitely windows that are still shining in. Um, some of the windows have been broken, so it's a little easier to see in it. Um, but there are people, there are three people in there. They are walking along, and they appear to be setting up. They're, they look like they're bringing in bodies from out in the streets, and once they've been drained of all the fluid, they seem to be rendering what's left with the fluids drained out into something and they seem to be processing the bodies and boiling them in bats. Okay. And the way it's set up is there's an entryway to the church, and that's where the that's where the room with the that you have the key for, where the uh, the alms box is. There is the the main body of the church where all the pews are at, and then there is the altar, and then off to the side there is the vestry where the priest gets ready for everything. So that's the setup of the church. And so far, you're only seeing these three people and the bodies that they're dragging in from the street once they've been thoroughly drained. Is there a window looking into the room with the strong box? Um, there's not a window there, but it is literally right off the, the entryway into the church. So you could kind of slide along the wall and go straight to that to that room. Hmm. Uh, does... Um, um, Teapot see a second exit from there, or is there only one way into this church and one way out? It it, it looks like, um, as far as Teapot sees, and he can share this if he wants, but it only looks like there's like a pair of double doors that lead into the church. There doesn't appear to be, other than just trying to like break through the windows to go in and out, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of other exits. And mm -hmm. the windows are about not, you know, obviously Vigdis, this is not quite the same, but the windows are a little bit above head height, you know, because they're kind of up to shine down into the place. Vigdis, it's kind of like at, you know, chest level, so, you know, Vigdis <laughs> can just go, hi. But... <laughs> uh, Teapot will make his fluttering way back. Okay. So, we have one double door, and in this double door, there are three people. They appear to be draining the blood and the like from bodies and then possibly stewing them. Um, which is generally a bad thing to do in church. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I think that uh, the, the window's probably a little too high for not him um, to get through. So everybody else would have a hard time getting there except me and... Um, well, the large guy. Um, I could lift you guys. If, if that's the way we want to go in, I can just hoist you guys up there. Those of you who don't fly. Uh, I'll ask to be hoisted up so I can take a good look, a good peek, and get a look at one of these cultist people. Okay. And then I will... Uh, tell you to hold me up there for a while and I'll wait for one of them to leave the room as long as that happens within the next like 10 minutes and uh, then I will scurry around assume their form and walk inside and tell them that uh, there are intruders in the opposite direction of where we are and try to like bait them away and then return to the party and uh, tell them that I've got it worked out when I leave I'll be like give me a moment and uh, yeah, <laughs> you're gonna try for that, and hopefully uh, not die in the church. Okay, so he lifts you up, and you can see them. So you can you can take that form. However, um, do, do you have the thing where you have a form that you revert to specifically? Uh, yeah, that's my stubby womanly. Okay, so so you always have that as a default. Okay, so that's good. So yes, you look at them so you can turn into them because normally if you don't have them in line of sight anymore, yeah, you you lose that form until I you... forgot that that's how it worked earlier. Yeah, so <laughs> she forgot that that's how it worked. And... That's okay. <laughs> Disappointed. <laughs> okay, so is it like a rectory or anything? What's like, that? Is there like a rectory of the church that we could get into the church a different way if we wanted to? I mean, instead of going through the into the main nave or whatever this part is. The, the main, it looks like it's mainly either through the windows or just through the, those front doors. But, um, so if Vigdis holds, uh, holds up uh, fringe. fringe there, 
Um, Fringe, let's play out your plan as long as nobody's going to stop Fringe from doing <laughs> One thing Vigdus would, would have wanted to do before we go is to sort of, he sort of decided that Kane is the one who's in charge here. So he'll ask what the, you know, how are we, you know, how are we approaching this? Are we grabbing this stuff and running or are we going to bash these people? Well, I mean, we should probably stop them from what they're doing, don't you think? It seems pretty bad. Well, if they murdered a whole town, they, they need to be brought to some form of justice. Uh, Vigdis has At a little bit of like this is new information for him. Like, <laughs> oh, you guys don't do that for the new god. Right. <laughs> yeah, this is this is not good. Let's uh and if, if Fringe feels like don't follow the new god. <laughs> if Fringe is most interested in doing that, I'm willing to let her because I have no idea what anyone's capabilities are. So if that's what she wants to do, I mean, I would be fine with Big just knocking on open the double doors and only three of them and there's, you know, five of us. So I would hope we would be okay in that situation, but I'm not sure the prostitute or uh, this... the teapot are interested in fighting that much, I guess, but... <laughs> Does Fringe share that she's going to try to convince them that there's enemies? This is more of a meta conversation for me right now, and if you guys decide that you don't want her to do that, I'll find another reason for her not to, well, to run off. Oh, no, no. I, I'm totally fine with that. I just wanted to... I am too. Yeah, add that little... I, I was just going to offer to go make a distraction on the far side of the building to help sell it uh, if she shares that she's going to try to convince them there's somebody over there. You um, might see her make the shift and you, if you knew her from before, you would recognize her as that shape-shifting weirdo out in the wilderness. <laughs> in which case, uh, you might be like, oh, if she's walking off over there, then I... All right. I'll go over so, to the other side of the church and use wind blast on the windows to... Uh... So you guys are standing there and the weirdo just went insane <laughs> and the clockwork guys. The clockwork guys just blasting with thing and the weirdo's gone and then suddenly one of the cultists reappears. <laughs> That's great. So, so for in order to use the incantation, um, it's, uh -huh. it's basically it's like a scroll in in D and D where it's a one shot item. Okay. So what you'll do is you make the intelligence challenge roll to read it. <laughs> and normally in combat you would roll to hit with it, but since you're just trying to hit something to make noise, I, I don't think you really need to roll. But he's kind of going for like the window chatter to make him go, oh, someone's trying to get in. <laughs> uh, well, that's a 14. All right. So you successfully read it. So now you can direct that blast at the window. And I won't even make you roll for that either. You just like. <laughs> it, so the incantation goes up, you know, turns to dust in your hands, but you fire this blast of wind at the window, and the window just goes. <laughs> now, um, so. We Fringe. really need to get better to at communicating at some point in the life of this party. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When Fringe, uh, Fringe, give me... I will give you... Uh, I'll give you two boons to this, but um, give me a test to see how well you convince them that you know, you're one of them so that the only threat is this big noise outside. Okay. Uh, is this a intellect check? Um, yeah. Okay. Doesn't matter. My will's the same number anyway. <laughs> 14. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they have, yeah, and actually, this actually gives you some information to the side because they aren't surprised that there's another cultist in town besides the three of them. And you come in, they're co firmly convinced that you're, you're one of them because you look exactly like them. And they go running outside when they hear that crash because there clearly must be more survivors. They... Thank you very much, sister. We must find more survivors so that we can make the black candles and the substance to feed the blot. I go running out. Do more of the jittering and just nod. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so uh, where are we rest, this ambush? I was going to say, the rest of you in the alleyway, are you just going to let them like run around? Or are you going to be lying there in wait to thump them? Um, I, I'm in favor of the latter. Yeah. Yeah. Let's so let the watch for them to, to uh, watch for them to run around the building and then follow them. And now they're in trapped in the alley and we can get them. All okay. right. So, um, basically we have, 
Dun, dun, dun. We are going to have um, teapot and and fringe are both busy for this initial instance because they set up the ambush. But everyone else, um, you can the other the other three of you can each take a fast action as you fall on these people to you know for your ambush. Could, could Fringe have followed them out though? That's that's true. Did Fringe, Fringe is going to go for that alms box? Actually, <laughs> don't waste any time. Okay, so Fringe is going for the alms box, which is I mean, she may be insane and terrible things was happening, but there's gold in the alms box, and she hurt. <laughs> exactly. Right. Priorities. Priorities, everybody. Okay, so basically to take a fast action, it's you don't move, you just take your action, but we're going to assume you all are within striking distance when you set up this ambush. Nice. So um, it doesn't matter what order you'd like to go in, but Abigail, Vigdus, and Kane, you can each take an action that the cultists are completely unaware of. Okay. Um. So... I'm certainly not happy with these guys, so I'm going to whack one with my spiked club. Yeah, well, I make shift morning star. Uh, so what do I do to do that? Um, that will be a strength uh, challenge roll, but this one is actually opposed because they are characters. So. So it's just a strength. I just rolled D twenty, and since my strength is a ten, that that's all that there is. Yes. Okay. So I'll just gonna do that. Okay. So Ooh, nineteen. Yes. Nineteen. Okay. So with a nineteen, you solidly hit them, and you can roll your one D six plus uh, plus two. Eight. All right. Nice. Wow. Well, that one takes eight damage. It is badly injured, but he doesn't quite drop. Um, oh, boy. Yeah, I'm going to beat that same one, then. Okay. I would be an object right now. Ah, <laughs> so I rolled 18 uh, with my strength. I got a 21. Okay. Yes, you, you hit. <laughs> okay. I rolled uh, seven points of damage. Okay. So eight points of damage. That one, like, um, Kane hit that one, and it, he was badly injured, and he was bleeding profusely, and he kind of spins around, and Vigdus just literally takes his head off with, with his club. <laughs> um, Abigail. <laughs> I, I, I'm a little horrified by the scene in front of me. <laughs> um, apparently, I'm, I'm going to be trying to stab the, uh, the remaining one, because I only have a dagger. Okay. And uh, this is going to go poorly because I'm at minus one. <laughs> I am correct. That's a five. <laughs> <laughs> so Abigail jumps out at the other two and your uh, your knife gets like snarled in their very, very nice robes. And uh, it doesn't actually hit any flesh. Daggers do use agility if it makes a difference because they're uh, That's a six. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, no. Okay, so um, can you use the um, actions from um, forbidden uh, uh, forbidden knowledge or forbidden lore, or whatever it is, forbidden rules? Mm -hmm. The reason I ask, I want to know if I can use uh, goad as a triggered action to try and get one of the ones to attack me rather than Abby. Sure. Okay, so I have to make an intellect attack roll against its will. Okay. My intellect is a minus two, so. God. Like yeah, so I rolled a three. So instead of saying "Don't hit her," I say "Hit her." <laughs> Duly noted. Or, or else, it's, or else it's kind of like, "Hey, hey, hey! You see her? You see her? I don't want you to hit her. I mean, I want you to hit me." <laughs> Psychology works on cultists. Oh man. Okay, so. Since we're doing zones, the way these zones are going to work, you have inside the church, the alleyway, and the street. Um, the cultists are currently in the street. So all of you are in the street except for um, except for Fringe that's in the church, and essentially uh, Teapot, you're on the, on the street. So street, church, 
someone else is telling you. So the way, if no one has um, has played this before, the way initiative works is there's fast turns, which you just take an action, and all of the PCs go first, and then the bad guys go. Or if you would like to move and take an action, then you take a slow turn, which takes place after all of the fast turns, and all of the PCs take their slow turns first, and then if any bad guys are left, they take their slow turn after that. So, we are in the first slow turn, so anybody that only wants to take an action, you can take a slow turn and act this turn. Um, those of you in the alleyway are within reach of the cultists, so if you did just want to stab them or hit them, you're right there with reach. That's a fast turn then. Yes. You, where it's fast turn, you mean, right? Yeah. I'm going to point out Vig this to, well, well, let's coordinate on this one again. Yeah. <laughs> See here. Ooh. Uh, I got a six. Okay. So so Vigdus Vigdus, you, you know, your coordination is I'm going to swing way over his head and when he ducks, you can hit him. <laughs> I'm used to targets that are much taller. <laughs> so Vigdus swings very wide here in the alleyway. You know what I do want to do though? Uh, is I'll use my triggered action to isolate the target. So if it attacks anyone other than me, uh, it takes a bane. Okay. I missed as well. Okay. <laughs> so we both decided to... Really well, guys. <laughs> one guy, but hmm, apparently not. So. Yeah. Um, Abigail, would you like to take a fast fast turn, or are you waiting to like get the hell out of here? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, at this point, I don't want them escaping. So, yeah, I, I, I'm going to try to help with uh, the stabbing. Okay. And a, and a five. Again. <laughs> <laughs> we started off really good. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've got three D20s in front of me. One's about to go to the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Dice training. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, so the question now is, um, Teapot, would you like to take a fast or a slow turn? If you have something ranged, you could throw it from the street to them. No, nah, he, he's going to take a slow turn. Okay. So um, then, Fringe, would you like to take a fast turn or a slow turn? A fast turn, you can basically like get in there and grab the alms box. Uh, then I will spend a fast turn doing that. Okay. Oh, no, I, uh, I'll, I'll take a slow turn because then I can pocket some of the alms and also get them. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so you're not going yet, but that's what your plan is. Gotcha. Yeah, that's the plan. Okay. So the two remaining cultists, um, they're going to take their turns now. And um, Vigdus does kind of seem like a threat. So they are going to target Vigdus. And let's see. No one is currently in shadows. Not that that would be a, an important thing. <laughs> Actually, you know what? No. They are going to they're going to take a slow turn and risk possibly being murdered before they go because they have something else they're going to do that's going to take their 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 movement. So they're waiting for the slow turn. So now we're on the slow turn. So fringe, you can go in there, unlock the door, grab the alms box. Um, the alms box is locked, however. So you can you have to open it again with the same key, but you'd have to open it before you can pocket any of it. All right, and I, I I don't know where the key is. No, you, you have the key. She handed okay. it. Okay, okay, good. Then I will. Uh, do I have the key? Who has the key? I, I was believe. assuming you had the key as long. As I have, have the key. That's great. Then I will open it with my uh, my slow turn, and the next turn I'll I'll take stuff and come out and after closing it, locking it. Okay. <laughs> so you have the alms box. The alms box is unlocked. You're all good to go. Oh, and also since it's unlocked, I will tell you, there are currently. There's 50 copper pennies in there. Oh, son of a bitch. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Alms box with 20 copper pennies. <laughs> copper pennies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, then uh, Teapot, you're the only one that hasn't gone. Uh, Teapot is going to go over the building and use the garrote that's built into kind of one of his arms and that's a ring toss with one of the cultists. 
Um, just going to point out, if anyone isn't disturbed by Teapot yet, he has a grow built into his his structure. <laughs> He's the kind of toy that comes with big warning labels. <laughs> No, no, but I think that Abby's probably going to need to make an insanity check after this. <laughs> so he's dive bombing over the top of the building and okay. uh, going with the garrote check. Uh, that'd be a seventeen. Nice. So, so you drop down uh, from above, and like this, <laughs> this length of wire like shoots out from one hand over to the other. <laughs> <laughs> Um, damage the first turn? <laughs> yes, because I made the successful attack, it does the d6. Okay. Um, and he is grabbed. Uh, oh. So that is two points of damage, and I am riding him like a pony. Okay. <laughs> oh dear, friendship certainly isn't magic here. <laughs> so now, for their slow turn, um, he is going to attempt to pull this away from his neck. Um, that is a... And he does that at a... What's that? Bane. Okay. He does get a Bane to attempt to do that. All right. So he is going to attempt to... So that is a 15 minus 2. So he got a 13. As far as I know, he would succeed at removing it from around his neck. All right. So so that that's his action, though. He pulls that away from his, his neck. And um, so... That's basically all he's doing this turn, other than... Actually, no. He's going to go ahead and pull off his mask, which is what the other one's doing, too. Both of them pull their masks off, and their faces are very, very disturbing underneath these masks. I mean, they're, they're these really nice kind of black and silver gilded masks, and underneath them, their faces, initially, when you look at them, don't look that terrifying, but their eyes are completely black, and it's like there's something writhing underneath their skin. Mm. So, because of that, <laughs> Will checks. <Jackson. laughs> yes. <laughs> so, give me a Will check at. They have frightening when they remove their masks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There's only two of them, not four or more, so there's no extra veins. Just a Will Stop. check. So that's yeah, a fifteen. Three. <laughs> fifteen. I can't see this. Oh yeah, you can't see this, so you're yeah. fine. So <laughs> grab a drink up here, thanks. <laughs> so as long as I make a ten or a better, I'm good because that's what I rolled. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, so who got lower than a ten? <laughs> Teapot. Uh. So the most disturbing uh, thing here, you're actually scared <laughs> of what this is. Actually, I know why you would be scared of this. <laughs> It's for other reasons, but you will take a yes. beating for the rest of this encounter because these things scare you. Sounds fair. <laughs> you are frightened. Okay, and then after taking off the mask, um, the one that's all he can do because he pulled the girl away from his neck and took the mask off. The other one is going to lunge at Vigdis. Bring it on. Uh, and get the grand total of six between his. <laughs> I represent a very big target, so it's pretty easy to hit me. Yeah, yeah, and yet he still got a six. So the cultist nice. lunges at you and goes, you're, you're awfully big. You should stand still when I try and stab you. <laughs> they are using, like, knives, or? Um, they have, they actually have short swords. Ooh. So good looting once they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> but they need to die quick. <laughs> yep. All right, so it's the and there's no there's no end of turn uh, mechanics with anything in this system. Um, just in case there is something later on, um, you know, like normally in like like D and D, a lot of times like effects will trigger on someone's turn, and then you check it every time on their turn. Because of the way the round structure is in this, you have an end of turn. So, like, if you were poisoned and you were taking damage, or there's a chance to, you know, shake a condition or something, that all happens at the formal end of turn part of the of the round. But there's nothing like that going on right now. So, we go to the second turn. Who would like to take a fast turn? Right. Abby's would. <laughs> as much as I hate to say it, uh, Abby's going to take one too. 
Okay. And one of the cultists is injured now because he does have that line across his neck from where the uh, <laughs> where the clockwork had the wire dug into his flesh. I guess he's going to kind of take his lead from Kane. Yeah, we'll, uh, take out the injured one. Yeah. All right. Let's make him go bang. Yay! 18. That will definitely hit him. Damage is ah, 11 points of damage. Holy cow. Nope, 12 points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Keep forgetting to add the one. So yeah, this time Vigdis, like the the guy, is still kind of like rubbing his neck, so he's kind of like disoriented a little bit, and he just kind of stumbles right in front of Vigdis, and Vigdis just like clung straight onto his head, and his head like it, it, it's it, it's kind of like the um you know it, were he a comedian and there were a watermelon here, that would be the similar effect that just happened with his head. Thanks. <laughs> Can I add that as a, uh, a new profession, prop comic? Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, that one's head just splattered, and the last one, his expression is odd because, you know, given that, you know, they have the writhing things under their face, it's hard to read them, but you're pretty sure his eyes got pretty wide when that just happened. <laughs> so who else would like to take a fast turn? Well, I got I'll 14. take a fast turn so I don't have to fight anything. I will hurriedly rush outside after closing the box. Okay. <laughs> I hit the other one with my uh, makeshift morning star. For mm, six points. All right. Um, did uh, Was that the, the damage or was that to hit? That was the damage. Oh, okay. So six points. That one's at six. Well, I mean, I guess I, I rolled a 14. I guess I forgot that it maybe it doesn't hit. <laughs> I was thinking I had to beat a 10. So. Yeah. The defenses is actually, it's more like armor class, so it's an opposed roll, but you still hit. So, yeah. So he took six damage. So this one is badly injured. You kind of, like, get the, the spikes from the thing lodged into his rib cage, and he's starting to bleed through the really, really nice robes. <laughs> I feel yeah. like we're going to make a killing on these robes afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I would That's... like to question these guys, but I don't really think that they're in any... Sh I don't believe that they would. we could trust them, anything they would tell us. So I'm <laughs> certainly interested in just removing them. I'm, I'm good with that. And so is it okay for Abby to take her action at this point? That yeah, sounds like fun. All right. <laughs> I think I hit this time. Um, I rolled a 15... After my minus one. <laughs> oh wait, no, it's it's a it's a flat it's a sixteen. Excuse me, because it's not strength based. Um, so yay, and then I rolled because I'm using a dagger. So strength, uh, you still take the minus one from your strength not being up to par, correct? For what? For the uh, damage from the dagger. Uh, damage does not affect uh, or str uh, strength does not affect damage rolls. Oh, even better. Then I rolled three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yay! All Slap. right. <laughs> the, the the cultist is not down yet. Damn it! <laughs> However, um, they are badly, badly injured. You do notice, though, um, in the the alleyway, the shadows are like intensifying and almost moving in ways they shouldn't for how the light is. So there's like shadows falling across everyone now. Uh, Teapot is going to use his action. Okay. And uh, play ring toss with this guy as well. Uh, that becomes a two. Okay. So you did not hit, correct? Oh, wait. And I forgot the this. Uh, two. So Teapot is so scared that he becomes an object. Oh, God. <laughs> So Teapot, basically, Teapot was trying to psych himself up to strangle this guy again, and all of a sudden, like, the wings retract, and I'm picturing Teapot being kind of like, kind of like retracting into, like, this metal ball, which <laughs> just drops down to the ground. No. My, my oh, picture man. of Teapot, given the description, is a monodrone Modron. <laughs> And I'm just picturing this modern drone Modron in the fetal position, which is a little hilarious. 
Poor Teapot. Okay, um, so that was Teapot's turn. Um, the cultist, um, he, he's kind of going for broke at this point, so he's just going to take his action and try and stab the giant, maybe stab the giant and run through where the giant was at. Love it. So um, what he is going to do is make his attack roll. Mm -hmm. um, is your defense higher than 13? Uh, it is not. Uh, it All is right. a nine. So unfortunately, their special property is triggered because the other ones have dropped and the shadows are falling across people. The shadows kind of like coalesce around the sword and the sword is now doing more damage for him because of the shadows blessing his blade. This is unfortunate. And he does six damage to Vigdis. Okay, I'll take it. Ouch. <laughs> and that was his turn. Vigdis just snarls at him and said, I've had lashes do worse. <laughs> All right. I believe him. Is he trying to move away from my melee range? Um, he was going to if he stabbed you and you dropped, but <laughs> he, dropped. he doesn't want to so, give me triggered action. So yeah, now we're into the third uh, the third turn. So anyone that would like to take fast turns may do so. Well, uh, I uh, on the second turn I made it out to the alleyway, right? Uh huh. Yeah, you're you're right here now. I have shadow sight. Do I see anything particular with my shadow sight, or just what everyone else sees? No, the only thing that you notice is like it's very obvious to you because you can see better in partially dimmed uh, areas that these shadows are not moving the right way. Like you can see through them fine, but it's very odd the angles and ways that they're moving. This is not a natural thing. I will yell that the shadows are monsters. <laughs> <laughs> but also anyone taking an action now because the shadows have started to writhe um, this is partially obscured, so if you don't have something like Shadow Sight, then you will be taking one bane to your to your actions. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try and bean this last one. Okay. I don't think I don't think Jotun have uh, Dark Sight. I'll just double check. Uh, nine. All right. So I yell out, where did the sun go? <laughs> and I rolled a one, so. <laughs> Apparently I listened really carefully to what Fringe said, and I'm like, shadows! <laughs> yeah, you're swinging randomly at any shadow that moves. <laughs> oh, oh dear. man. So that was Vigdis. Who else would like to take a fast turn? I'm going to try and attack it and tell everyone we can't let him escape. So we must finish oh. him. Perhaps more emphatically. Uh, oh, so I got a 15 still, even with the 5 Bane. Nice. Kane was not letting this guy get away. Uh, he was very in, in, involved in finishing. Yep, that's 7 points of damage. So so Kane, very, um, because of the, the disturbing visage in the guy's face and the weapon that Kane is using, you basically smash in his writhing face right as he's... Uh, Turning away from the Jotun that's been flailing around at shadows. The pain just solidly erases the guy's face from his head. Now, unfortunately, your your morning stars are not going to be very much use for the next combat. But all three of these guys have short swords, which do 1d6. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna So we can maybe use these as a disguise if we want to, to if we need to when we go below the under the stone, if there's because I, I think there's going to be more cultists down there, so pass out. I'll, I'll take one, and obviously, you don't get one, I guess. So, pass it out to the other two people. Oh, and I'll find the key for um, uh, the teapot and get him going again. <laughs> so, he winds, he uses his action, winds you back up, and <laughs> teapot's like everything that retracted comes back out of teapot, and he's oh, no man. longer an object. I didn't twist what, what, him up that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I miss? Well, these guys are finished. Um, oh, good. So Excellent. we've ended that threat to the town, I guess. Uh, so we've already we know the entirety of the church is basically just the nave and the altar and uh, 
the secret the room with the uh, alms box, and that was it. There's nothing else going on in there. Uh, well, you haven't been into – there was the, okay. um, the vestry where the priests get ready. You haven't been in there. Well, let's let's check out that and see if there's any survivors in there. I'm sorry that you – Well, is someone who does anything we can do about that? I'm sorry. All right. How bad is the Jotun or the Jotun? Is he, um, is he? I am down to six. Uh, well, I've taken seven damage. I've got a threshold of 13. So I can still take six more before I shuffle off this mortal coil. <laughs> well, I think we're going to need him so he can use my healing potion. That's <laughs> actually what I was thinking, too. I was looking at, I was trying to look for that in the book. <laughs> Terrific. I have no healing potion. So it gives me my healing right back. Yep. I think that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm up to nine. And um, nine health left. I will um, hand him mine. Um, nice. <laughs> because we need we need somebody big and strong. I, I have a feeling Vigdus is being elected meat shield. I <laughs> was hoping that would be the case. So he, he guzzles both of those back and kind of feels better, stretches himself a little bit. <laughs> now, are we going to deal with these shadows? So, so the other thing that's grow. funny is Fringe presents you with a with a the alms box that is filled with twenty copper pieces. <laughs> Actually, the way I heard it, um, uh, Mike, is that you took the coins out of it and you didn't take the box. No, I took the box. Go in there, be like, oh my god, this it's empty. <laughs> no, 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 I brought the box out with me. Okay. <laughs> and I unlock it in front of you. It's it's all good. Well, that's <laughs> fun. <laughs> so, okay. so yeah, as presented to the rest of the party, there is there there is about thirty uh thirty copper left in it, or not not thirty copper, twenty copper left in it. And three short swords as well. Uh huh. There's three short swords as well. Yes. So like yeah, Vigus yes. will pick one of them up like this, <laughs> and hand it over to uh, Abby. Yeah. Then I I guess I get a short sword now. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I took a short sword as well. All right. Teapot will sort of cough and clear his not throat and say, sorry you had to see that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so who is going into the vestry first or at all? I'll uh, I'll take the, the lead. Okay. Yeah. Teapot will follow along. Yes, I will as well. Well. Um, anyone that already saw the horrible things out in the streets, you don't need to make this check, but anyone that um, didn't make a check for the horrible things in the streets, give me a will check now. Uh, the well, one... Unless you want to say that you have, you've <laughs> seen something like this before, and then I will let you take a point of corruption. If we took a point of corruption from beforehand, do we have to take another one? No, no, you're fine. Okay, You're fine, it's just there was a couple of people that never looked outside. So, <laughs> okay. a a Abby was one of them, and she just rolled a twelve. <laughs> so plus the it's a will save or intellect. It's will. So thirteen. So you haven't seen this before, but you're 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 a tough tough tough. Apparently, with a I mean, it worth a darn in combat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure, okay. Um, was did Kane see? Uh, no, but I just took a point of corruption. Okay. So Kane has seen something like this before and it's hardened him. So Yes, you're... he's hardened this sort of thing. But not, not not this bad, but apparently it's bad enough. Well while while Abby may uh have seen it may 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 not be taking anything, this is probably pretty sickening. So she'll she'll step back outside and puke on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Vegas will hold your hair. <laughs> Which is pretty much just the beer that you had because you spent all night throwing. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, the beer I had for breakfast just came up. I guess I better have another one for dessert. <laughs> Time for beer for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Vigdis, when you look in the, the priest room, like it, basically as you step through this place, all of the bodies that have been drained outside that are nailed to buildings get brought in here when they're just meat sacks. And then they're boiling the meat sacks down. So part of what's kind of disturbing is since, you know, since you guys are feeling a little bit better from being poisoned, you're smelling meat being cooked, which is terrible. 
And uh, <laughs> that's going on. And on top of that, like, you're just seeing, like, these, like, there's a pile of bones where they've just cut things off of the bodies and thrown them into the pots. But then um, everything in the churches has been trashed. Like, pews are knocked over. Um, in the priest's room, when you look in there, everything has kind of been tossed through. It was just like a cursory thing. It doesn't, they don't look like they did it methodically. It was just kind of like trashing any symbols of the, uh, of the new God that were in here or anything like that. So are you going to carefully look through this, or are you just going to tell everybody what you see in there? I think I really, I really want to do that like Conan tipping over the cannibal soup thing. <laughs> okay, I'm just knock it over because I, I, Vignus is not super familiar with the uh, uh, the cult of the new god, but he does have it on good account that this isn't what they do. So, <laughs> all right, so so Vignus just out of uh, sheer defiance walks up there and shoves the cauldron over and the boiled body parts like sloosh all the way across the, uh, the floor. <laughs> and then he'll look back to Kane like looking for approval. <laughs> <laughs> kind of grossed out, but yeah, some nodding approval there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Once uh, Abby is um, done puking, I'm thinking about this in terms of possessions. Um, are there clothes on the ground or is this like from where they cut like clothing off of people kind of yeah, look for like, identifying, uh, identifying rings or amulets or anything like that? Something well, easy to pocket, but something that would help us identify somebody. There's like some scraps here and there and maybe some charms and things of that nature that, you know, like, like tied together feathers and things like that, that some people may have, may have been carrying on them. None of it's going to be worth anything because of the way they've been handled or because it's drenched in body part fluids and things like that. But you can kind of pick out some of the townspeople that you knew, you know, would have worn certain things. Okay. Can we take a look at the those gilded masks? Sure. Is there anything, does anyone know anything? Uh, Vigdis has no clue. Uh, but he'll sort of like gesture it towards one of the smarter members of the group and be like, hmm? Um, this is going to be one of those um, those skill checks where you don't get a boon, but you if you have a religious uh, profession, you can make the check in the first place to see whether or not you know anything about it. Okay. And it would be an intellect check. Um, would Teapot be able to use an ancient history check? Sure. Or use his ancient uh, history as a boon? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Teapot, you, you actually are you, you may not need to make a check for these. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> oh, dear. Teapot will look like he's pondering for quite a while, trying to remember something, and then share what he knows. It, because Teapot is a, an ancient uh, thing that has worked for the Inquisition for decades, um, there is a particular cult Um it is it, it, it is a cult of people that worship things from the void, which is the thing outside of reality that is like the worst thing ever. And it, this particular cult is called the is part of the cult of shadows. And their thing is that this isn't like the the weird cultists that live out in the middle of nowhere. These are like um, like nobles and rich people that have decided that. You know, this this is the Evo Shandors of uh, of the setting where they're they're rich nobles that have decided reality just needs to end and are using all of their resources to help that along. Teapot will share that. <laughs> what Vigdis takes from that is to look at the mask and say, "So they're made of gold." <laughs> <laughs> they are, um, yes, but. I, I'm not quite so certain we would want to use this, depending on the rituals that were involved. <laughs> Can I crush it down? Yeah, it's relatively. I mean, it's there. It's like gilded with silver, but it's mainly just you know a mask. So yeah. Big this, big this. Hold on, hold on. We need these masks. We need to be able to get in there. Yeah, we're gonna use those. Disappointed, and guys. Then kind of it over to Abby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. Thank you, Vigdis. <laughs> right, Jason, you were saying something? The same thing, yeah, that we wanted to use these as a disguise if possible. Oh, shit. Cat just scratched me. 
Tupac. The, the cat was agitated by Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, actually. A good RP by your cat. <laughs> so let's head over to this hole in the center of all stone here. Oh, well, you did say you were going to check in, in the room, though. Was anybody going to do anything other than just notice that it had been tossed and symbols had been broken? Or Well, if we can find – maybe it would be important if we can actually find a, um, a symbol of the new god to carry with us since I don't think any of us have one, and the head priest used to be here. So maybe um, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Let's keep watch, though, and make sure none of these other cultists show up. If anyone has shadow sight or dark sight, they can make a perception check in the room to look for something useful. If you do not have that, you'll be making it with one bane because there's no windows that shine in here. So it's just like the the light from outside. I um, rocked a two and find nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and Fringe is really looking. <laughs> <laughs> if Fringe doesn't find it, I'm sure there's nothing in here. <laughs> well, if, it's, if it's really dark in here and uh, um, and the rest of the guys were, were looking through the remains and stuff like that, I'll light up one of my torches so that we can actually see. Okay, so yes, someone else can make a check now without any banes to toss the room if you want to. 13. Sure. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm picturing Vigdus is just like holding this up there because he's used to kind of helping Abigail do things. So uh, what you find in there, there is a leather uh, satchel that is sealed and feels like it has something of weight inside of it. Like a dead baby. Um, don't say that because that's probably what it is. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got a satchel. Is there, and that's it? That's all we really find? Yes. I mean, it's the only thing I've used. Like, there's holy symbols and robes that have all been like cut to pieces and desecrated. The the cultists that were outside, did they have anything else on them? Like were they wearing no like you know nobles clothing or anything like that? Uh, no, they just had the really really nice robes and the short swords, and that appears to be it. By the way, we probably should drag those bodies into the church. Done. Vigdis <clears throat> over the shoulders brings them in. Body dragging very very important. Yes, <laughs> uh, we don't want to be seen. Um. So are you look looking in the the leather satchel? Yes. <laughs> I'm afraid to look into this, given what horrors we see so far. Um, do you bring it out of the room first? Probably a good idea. <laughs> That's what we call it. Where there's more light. So, um, Fringe and uh, Kane and Teapot all notice that the symbol on the satchel is it's an, an it, it's an Inquisitor sent. Sigil. It's mm. not a uh, regular church bag. So apparently a visiting inquisitor left this at the church. <laughs> now, if you open it, um, you see there are four, um, four vials of something and a scroll inside of it. All right. Um, well, Vials and a scroll. Uh, how about I uh, try reading the scroll? Because um, I'm a well-read, I'm a well-read hooker. <laughs> when you open it, um, you can. It's not in a language you would normally understand, but yes. you can normally understand. You can actually understand it. If you start reading it out loud, you will activate it because it appears to be an incantation. Ah, it is an incantation for a spell that will cause a burst of flame. <laughs> or a fire blast spell found on page 128 of the uh, core rule book. Well, that's a handy one to have. Um, I think I'm going to hold on to that because we need more than one person able to use magic fire. Um, I Anybody with experience with the, uh, the Inquisition... Is there a, 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 a specific like uh, structure to vials, like potions, holy water, things like that, that would be in there? Yeah, I was going to say they could probably look at it and, and tell you for sure that it, it looks like these are probably, um, 
they're probably healing potions for a an inquisitor that's about to go into a dangerous situation. Got nice. it. Um, we have three of those. Four. Four. All right, number one. Um, I, I I do believe that uh, that Vigdis needs more healing. Correct. I'm only down by one right now. Okay. So I, I'm I'm okay. I think for now. Okay. So we've got four of these. Can Teapot use one of these, or is he more of a we need we need like a mechanic? He is a creature when he is active. He okay. is a machine when he's not active. <laughs> it's true. Um, given that at least three of us will be um, in melee, I think um, Teapot, Kane, Vigdis, and either myself or Fringe should take the last healing potion. I'll take healing potion. Okay. I, I get to stand back this time. Then. Offers to take it. I, I will let the prostitute have mine. Um, are you sure, Teapot? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just looking at his face, just going, what in the world is wrong with your face? <laughs> but okay. It's a very expressive face. It, it is. Yes. Uh -oh. Almost disturbingly so. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> um, so your character is like sort of constantly in Uncanny Valley? Yes. <laughs> Uh, a little more on the uh, uncanny side, since it's the Michael Bay motorized <laughs> version of expressive face. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's that's just not right. <laughs> like I said, social just... interactions are at a bane. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Why does your mustache have gears? <laughs> So with uh, Vignes, we'll, we'll sort of come back to Kane again and say, uh, you know, he's got a, a very clear checklist in mind. We've done this. Now what? The stone? Yes, let's do the stone. Uh, the people who can, we can disguise them and the others follow along. And let's hopefully there aren't any more cultists in there. But I'm sure there will be. Okay. Yeah. So who all is taking, uh, taking robes and putting them on? What color were the robes again? They're they're black and gray. Okay, so uh, relying on his years of uh, thrall uh, status, he, he will try and wash as much of the blood and gore off of the robes as possible. Yeah, some some of it's not too bad because the blood doesn't show too much unless you look really close. So, yeah. uh, and then we so we got three robes. Who wants to take those? Well, the most human sized of us. So I would guess uh, oh, yeah, I myself, Kane. <laughs> And French? French, yeah, yeah, I'll rub it up. Um, yeah. And masks too, as much as I hate to say that. Let's hold off on the masks until we get closer. Agreed. I'll, although I'm just like I was just picturing Teapot like hovering with a robe draped over. <laughs> <laughs> I have to land at the end of every turn, so <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't really work. Oh man. Anyway, okay, so you're heading over to where the stone was at. Um, when you get closer to the stone, you notice the stone is like in the center of town, but you cut away from the alleyway right over to it. The stone has always had weird writing on it that nobody was really sure what it said. Um, and it's just been here since people founded the town. Um, and now it's just been shoved out of the way, which is really odd because you're pretty sure, like, Vigdis would uh, would get a hernia trying to budge this thing, and it's just been kind of slid over to one side. Are there, like, tracks that, that it ran on, or...? Um, it just looks... I mean, it's slid away from the entrance. It just kind of looks... There's no, like, mechanical thing. It just looks like it slid over, but it doesn't... It looks like it slid. It didn't look. doesn't look like it rolled. Hmm. So somebody either pushed it, and that's a heck of a lot of strength, Vigdis, um, <laughs> or it rolled. That's not good. <laughs> and you do see stairs going down in there, but the it's not lit in the uh, down inside there. So once you get past the entryway, it's going to be dark. So the, the one observation that, and Vigus is not a super perceptive dude, but 
The one observation he does make is that if we don't know how this opened, we don't know how it'll close either. <laughs> You're, you have a wonderful point there, Vigdis. I'm not sure we have a choice, though. Kane will light up a torch. Yeah. Vigdis think... nods as well. He's happy um, to agree with Kane. I, I say that, I mean, are you know, there shadows enough that I can see, or is it just total darkness? It's it's total. I mean, you can see a little bit further than everyone else. You can see to the bottom of the stairs, but after that, it goes completely dark. Okay. Well, I say that I uh, my family has always been good at seeing in the darkness, and that I will scout a little bit ahead of you guys, uh, and hopefully warn us before me, me walking okay. into something. So someone could stand on the stairs with the torch, and Fringe could hit. You could scout ahead, and she would see fine. Yeah. Let's do that. Um, who's gonna hold the torch? I can. Does Fringe have a um a uh, one of the robes on? I do. You have one of the short okay. swords from earlier. Who has? I, I know I have one. You don't have a short sword. Okay. Other people have short swords. I have a uh, I have a blade, but not a short sword. All right. So, Fringe, um, when you head down there, assuming that everybody kind of goes like halfway down the stairs and Fringe scouts ahead, um, you're seeing over in the the corner, there is um, there's multiple shackles on the wall, and there's three spots where there were shackles. Two of them are empty, and they have open shackles, and the third one, there is a dwarf chained to the wall. And you actually recognize this dwarf as Arno the town drunk, Arno. Nobody likes well, Arno. I will, uh, He's not a productive member of the community. He's basically Arno is an asshole, but <laughs> he is chained up to the wall here. Is he alive? Yeah. Is he, he is also the well, I, only member of the community? Yeah, he's the community now. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can't. He's both the most upstanding member of the community and the least upstanding. It works out well for him. <laughs> But um, yeah, Arno, Arno appears to be kind of, you know, sobbing to himself. But you, he hasn't noticed you guys coming down the stairs yet because um, because Kane is back on the steps with the with the light, and you're ahead, just kind of seeing in the the secondary like shadowy part. So, do you announce yourself, yeah. to Arno, or do you come back to everybody? I will just immediately go about undoing his shackles because I have been a prisoner in a dungeon before. Okay. And deeply affected me, so I will uh, try to get him out of there quietly and take him up to the top of the stairs. So you, if he tries to talk, I'll just like put my hand over his mouth. So a massive cultist is untying. Yeah. I was just about to say, you walk up to Arno and you start reaching for him, and Arno immediately goes, "You're back! You're not going to kill me like you did the others, you bastard! You rotten bastard! You get away from me!" And he just starts like, "So give me a um." An agility as to see if you can slap your hand over his mouth before he goes on for too long. Uh, shut up, Arno. 18. Okay. <laughs> so, so you managed to, like, you know, kind of shove your. I, I said, how do, you, how do you shut him up? <laughs> I will reach up with my head and, like, uh, try to just, like, I'll shove his head up. Like under his jaw, with my hand under his jaw, and I was like, "Shh, I'm getting you out of here! Don't give us away!" <laughs> All right, give me, um, give me a test to see if you can convince him that you are on the up and up. How trustworthy do you seem? <laughs> I know I'm friend. I only got an eight on that, but I will spend my um, fortune. To, okay. to make that not a success. All right. So, yeah, the, there's just something about the way you talk, and Arno's like, oh, you're, you're not one of them? I, I thought you were one of them. The, everybody else was dying, and they drug us down here and changed us to the wall, and then they started taking them one by one, and they were making these horrible noises, and I, I think they took them in the other room and killed them. Shh, quiet. They got to do the manacles and stuff. Tell me upstairs. Okay. So yeah, he's he's whispering so as not to be screaming like he tried to do previously, and he retreats back with the rest of you. Then you can tell them all about the stuff. 
I just don't want to have to repeat it. <laughs> um, also, also, we need to know how many. That's important. Mm. So Ar Arno's like, well, there were, there were like six of them at one point, I think. But then another one showed up, and and he had a bodyguard, and everybody seemed to be like, like paying deference to him. And the bodyguard, there was something wrong about it. <clears throat> While Arno's doing this too, I'm picturing that Vigdis has like the amount of fucking times he's had to throw Arno out or like yes. get him to leave the brothel or whatever. There's a little bit of him. He's thinking like, this is all your fucking fault. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you yeah. said the yeah. fancy lady said some other bullshit, but fucking Arno. Ar Arno <laughs> is the perennial trying to get free services from the brothel and. <laughs> <laughs> um, nope, nope, not going there. <laughs> <laughs> um, did the uh, did Mother Bastion describe Sir? Uh, hold on, what's his name? Regis? Oh. Sir Regis? No, she yeah. didn't describe him. Hmm. So, uh, did they happen to say a name for this guy? No, no, they just they, they just called him uh, they called him by his title, I think. Uh, he was they refer to him as the father of shadow or something. Hmm. Did they mention the blot? Yeah, yeah, they said something about feeding the blot. Oh dear. We don't really think that Seregus is the, is involved in this, right? You still think that Mother Bastion is was evil in some way and involved in this? Oh, no, I don't think Mother Bastion was, but she may have been misled. I think all right. they're all in it. You guys are cynical. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> Kane is the opposite. He's so certain that this is what you know we need to be doing in order to uh, redeem ourselves from the past. And he, so far as he's willing to give up his life to, to fire off this thing to kill the, kill the blot. So oh, Teapot is right there with you. He's sure that Mother Bastion's on the up and up. It's just he doesn't necessarily trust the Regis guy who showed up as a noble right before this noble thing kicked off. Mm. <laughs> Vigdis finally put two and two together. And you get four. <laughs> Vigdis takes a moment. Yes, Kane. Yes. <laughs> well, Vigdis is pretty much pretty resigned to like if this is his weird, then this is this is his fate. So should we go down? We certainly need to. Let's send a. Uh, Back to the brothel, though. For the first time, I guess you could send the drunk Arno to the brothel on purpose. <laughs> like this is about to protest, and then kind of like Kane said, it was it was the way it was. <laughs> um, Abigail's going to warn him to keep to the alleyways and kind of give him an idea of how they got there. So he's listening to this, but you notice he's hanging back. He doesn't really want to go back out on the streets, even though it's daylight and there's all these, but there's still all the bodies nailed to the things. Before he fully gets away, what you notice is, um, is anybody coming down the stairs with the light? Wait, sh shouldn't we take him with us? Extra meat yes. shield. Uh, Kane has a light and is there. Okay, so what you see is in the next room, even with the light there, the entire room is just filled with varying shifting degrees of darkness. Like there's gray and there's black and it's all like darting around. And there is a bowl sitting outside a metal bowl sitting outside the, uh, the room and it has writing in it. Does anyone that can read? I can read. I look at the bowl. I can read. I can read. What's all in right. the bowl? Um, first off, you see an, you see an inscription above the the door that refers to this as the Room of Dancing Shadows. That's good. And on the uh, on the bowl, it says that if you empty someone's heart's blood of a thinking beast into the bowl, it will feed the shadow guide to take you through the maze of shadows. Hmm. 
Maybe we shouldn't be letting Arno go too quickly. <laughs> uh, full of very useful heart's blood. So. <laughs> All right, I, I, I'm going to say this. We have heart's blood. Okay, there, there, there are people who are drained on the freaking street. There's got to be some heart's blood out there. I'm taking this is H E R H E A R T, not H A R T. Yes, it is not a not as in a deer's blood. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather if we can avoid it. I would. I would very much not like to murder anybody else, please. <laughs> Other than the cultists, cultists are fine. They're they're not people anymore. Did you see their faces? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, is somebody going to scout one of the corpses to see if it has any blood in its uh, heart yet? Uh, Teapot will go up and find one of the big pots of drained blood that's been collected and bring it back. All right. Um, so do you feed the blood into the bowl? Apparently. Yeah. You got, you got <laughs> some blood then? All right, good. Because I was, I was afraid we were going to have to kill somebody. <laughs> Fringe was first on the list. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, though? I don't... By strictest definition, I don't think you can get heart's blood from, from Fringe. Okay. <laughs> Dang it. Who's second? You can. <laughs> An upsetting thing to find out. <laughs> Let's not find out. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a waste. Are we letting... Uh, Arno... <laughs> Darn it. Are we letting Arno go, then? Or is he... Cause he if he wasn't willing... Are we... So I'm thinking, like, just in, in, in a metagame context, it's it's an extra person who's su sucking up hits, and in a fiction context too, like we're all just normal dudes as well. You know, his profession is just town drunk. So, <laughs> like, I mean, he may not be willing to go along with us, but I, I can't see there being a reason why we wouldn't just be like, to, come on. To be honest, he's kind of ambivalent because. Yeah, he'd like to get somewhere safe, like the brothel, but at the same time, he's running to people that aren't cultists. So he kind of doesn't want to not be around people either. You can yeah. come with us, Arno. Be right back. Because I'm assuming there's not necessarily a downside to having him with us. Other than he could get killed, and I would feel like that would be in my conscience then. But he may get killed somewhere else in the town as well. That's um, okay, though. <laughs> <laughs> As long as we're not the ones who kill them, then we're okay. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so when you pour the, um, when you pour the blood into the bowl, um, a figure coalesces out of all of the, um, the shadows, and it puts its shadowy hand-ish thing into the bowl, and the bowl drains. Um, so our, um, our our construct here, you, you're a little concerned about what this thing is. <laughs> like, I'm sure everyone is a little disturbed by seeing this shadow thing come out of the shadows, but you really are not happy with this shadow thing coming out of the shadows? He is very pointedly not looking at the shadow thing. He is very pointedly looking at the ground. <laughs> Making eye contact might end up being bad. So, everyone, if you would, um, give me, uh, give me a uh, a test, a will test. Will test, okay. Um, and also, uh, Teapot is totally okay if he has to take corruption for the fact that he just fed a thing that he. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> ah, I got a 10. Okay. So, um, yeah, Teapot. Um, I, I will actually, um, and this is, this is me. I'm doing part of this because you guys are zero level, so we're kind of establishing backgrounds here. Like other times you wouldn't necessarily say, oh, you can take corruption instead of this. That's not mainly part of the rules I'm saying. Since you're newly defining your characters, if you want to say they've seen some shit, that's perfectly okay to say you have that instead. But Teapot, um, 
I'm going to say, would you like to take more corruption or would you like to be afraid and take uh, sanity? <laughs> no, he'll, we're gonna he'll go ahead and take more corruption because this is, <laughs> this is reminding him of who he is. <laughs> is that just one point? Yeah, just one point. So Teapot, uh, you want to blow that? Back. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, could you make me a will test? Oh, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, um, 14. Basically, a shadow creature just coalesced out of all of the darting shadows and drank the blood. Oh, that's that's unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Teapot seems very upset by this. Teapot is very upset by this. So um, this thing has come out of the shadows, and now it like gestures to lead you through the darting shadows in this room. Had you not had a guide and you tried to get through here, you could technically get through here, but you would have been making multiple checks and could have potentially taken a lot of sanity damage. Mm. Yeah, I think yeah. it was necessary. And, and basically, you know this because as you're walking through here, you get this this very disturbing feeling like, um, the maze of shadows, the shadows that you're seeing, it's not just shadow creatures that are here on this plane. It's you're literally seeing areas of reality that are kind of frayed and might be looking into the void. Let's try and, not looking that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's Focus why I on uh, the um, creature and hopefully no other traps. <laughs> so, um, when you get to the end of the maze of shadows, um, what you see is there is this huge open space. You're fairly certain this is most of the area kind of under the town. Um, there is the area where you came out. Um, there is an area that seems to go over to a stream that you're pretty sure feeds the, uh, the well on the outskirts of town. There is an alcove at the far end of this cavern where you kind of can see a figure and it's a very, very dark something next to that figure. And then there appears to be like a raised altar over to the other side. So basically there's four areas. There's the entryway, the, the stream stream bed, the alcove, and the altar. The are, are there any that... other light sources? Oh, sorry. Oh, um, like... Are there light sources in here or no? Or there actually just... are. There are. Okay. There's basically black candles all over the place down here. Um everything like it's all shadowed so if you don't have shadow sight you'll be taking one vein to do anything but it's not completely dark so you can see things it's just it's all by flickering candlelight that's all over the place okay i'd say we make our way towards the blot right yeah, away yeah there's still two of us with torches as well i think cuz uh, kane's got his torch out and i've got my torch out as well you do notice there's a figure next to the blot and there's also a figure by the altar the figure by the altar has not turned around it's you know, it hasn't noticed you because this is a huge chamber, and they appear to be like working on something. Like they're going from one area to another area, and they appear to be, you know, kind of very busily doing something. Mm. Straight to the blot, I say. Let's just deal with that thing, and then whatever follow follow through we have, then we'll have to deal with it when it comes. Um, Teapot is going to try to sneak up on the person at the altar and uh, um, <laughs> say hello in his own special way. Okay, so it sounds like everyone's going to be making stealth checks just in different directions. <laughs> so um, everyone, uh, who all is going, so Teapot's going over to the cultist by the altar, everyone else going to the blot? Yep. Yeah. We don't, I'm going to have to keep I'll, my torch. I'll join Teapot. I, I don't think it's safe for us to be alone. Okay. So I'm waiting on that. So Teapot and Fringe are going over to the altar, and... The other three are going over to the blot. So everyone give me your stealth challenge rolls. Is that an agility test? It is. Also, um, unless you're holding a light source like a torch, um, make it with one uh, boon. Yeah. Well, I have shadow sight, so I'm cool, right? Ooh. What's, what's that? <laughs> I have shadow sight, so I don't need a candle, right? Right. Ah. Okay. Well, I still only got an eight, so I'm not very stealthy. Yeah, I got a nine. <laughs> Twelve. Uh, Twenty. Oh, wait, I forgot the minus for my uh, Bane. Sorry. Uh, 10. Okay. 
So, um, was that a uh, fringe and fringe and Vigdis that missed the rolls? Yeah. Okay. So basically, what happens? You all start. You know, two of you head over to the altar. The other three of you head over to the far side of the chamber, and this is like a huge, huge chamber. So you're walking by the stream bed where the field feeds the well. Um, what happens is the three of you that head over to the blot. Um, Abigail and Kane, you get right next to the blot. Vigdis, you kind of like stumble right as you get to the blot, and the figure that is near the blot looks straight at you, but not the other two. Yeah, I just had a thought that the, the people who have the, the radiant spells, I think, went not to the blot. I, do, I have I have I have one of oh, the two scrolls. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. Um oh. <laughs> The now at the other at the other place, Teapot, you're hovering like above the cultist and getting ready for Garrett position, and off to the side, Fringe trips over like one of the little ceremonial bowls <laughs> that is laying out there. So the cultist looks over it at at, uh, at at Fringe, but not does not aware of Teapot. So um, if Kane uh, Kane Abigail and Teapot can all take a fast action and then we will go to regular turns. Yeah. Um, any chance I can use that scroll? <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to sure. do as well. Sure. Um, make, um, I believe your scroll that you have with you is uh, Abigail is uh, you said was uh, Fire Blast. Yes, yours is an area. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of want to hit the blot and the guy at the same time if I can. Gotcha. Okay, so what was that one? So the first thing you need to do to see if it even works is make an intelligence test. It is this. The spell you are using is a power one. Uh huh. You make the intelligence test with one bane because it's kind of complicated to read the spell <laughs> without training off of this thing for you. Um. I want to take a picture of this dice roll because I'm very happy. It survives. <laughs> um, I rolled a 17 on my D20 plus one for my intelligence. So that's 18 minus one. I rolled a skull for my bane. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like destiny is telling you your character is supposed to be a spellcaster. Uh, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, she's uh, going to cast the spell and it does. 3d6 damage to everything in that area. Okay, so when you're doing the abstract uh, thing, mm. Fire Blast is a cone three yards long, which means... Minus one. So you can hit two things. And that's exactly what I want to do. I want to hit two yes. things. <laughs> because the way area effects work is if you're hitting something and there's other things in the area, you will hit other things. So in other Got words, it. hit two things and there was only one target, you would have hit a a companion with the, with the blast. But Got you it. can hit the lot and him at the same time, which is good. Yeah. Um, and I rolled uh, Roll one, and four, and five. So ten damage. Wow. So... <laughs> Agility check, and hopefully they don't take half damage. The creature that um, that you see that turned on the giant is uh, he appears to be wearing like rotted old uh, armor, like this is an old corpse from a battlefield. Mm -hmm. And dun, 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 his agility is even, so. He fails the agility test. Ooh. Nice. So how much damage will it do again? I'm sorry. Ten. Ten. All right. So he is definitely not destroyed, but there's a you burned off like quite a bit of flesh, so it's very obviously like an animated skeletal thing now that you blasted it in the face. And uh, ten damage, the blot is severely reduced in size. Almost like if anything else, fire or radiant that's magical hits it, it would be enough to eradicate it. Hmm. Hey, wait, we've got somebody else who's about to do that. <laughs> Please, I hope. <laughs> Try. All right, so I can go ahead and roll my intelligence, right? My intellect first. And your spell is only at zero level, so there is no bane to it. All right, good. I only rolled a two, though. Yes, I'll have to use my fortune. 
Um, okay. So you spend your fortune, fine. like the words weren't making sense, and then suddenly you feel as if maybe the new god really is behind you in this, and the words start making sense, and it all <laughs> is clear, and you read, you, you read the scroll and enact the spell. All right. I never found it, so I don't know what it does. Um, it, that one, make, you make an attack roll. That is... Is that you make the flame missile? Um, I'm going to use my fortune to give him two boons on the attack roll. Okay. Do you you really feel like you got that is on your side. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so it will be a will test with two, with two boons. So whichever of the one is higher, you take that bonus and add it to the roll. Because stopping this is way more important than anything else I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> All right, so I have a minus one. Okay. Oh, boy. So the attack roll was a 10. Exactly. Nope, nine. Oh. <laughs> with the boon? Yeah, because I rolled a two. I got a minus one on my willpower on my will, so someone else has to use the fortune, I guess. I'll I'll, I'll throw it. Okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, this is this is important. As long as someone else spends a fortune, you can't. Oh, you can't. Well, no, yeah, actually, no, you don't add them. You're taking the ones highest, so. So it's only a seven. okay. Oh. <laughs> but yeah. You know what? If someone else spends a fortune, you hit. That that's fine. If, if <laughs> I you earn two fortune. I'm not going to make you hope for a six out of all of this. Here. Well, I mean, what is the defense of the blot, really? I mean, it's not moving, right? <laughs> well, no, oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's actually not. It's just. I, I'm I'm sorry. I forgot that. What was your original roll? I rolled a two, and okay. then I, I mean I. So, so what, I had. What's that? But I got one, so I have a one. Okay, so originally I was gonna say it's stationary, so actually it was a five. It wasn't a ten. I was thinking it was a ten, but it was a five. But you, so you would have needed a fortune, but you wouldn't need both the fortune because you would have hit a five right. with one fortune. So yeah, yep. But yes, you hit the blot with that. Okay, good. The, um, the shining, <laughs> not easily. <laughs> shining celestial blast shoots out. You do one d six damage. Um, any damage is going to do it, but go ahead and roll it. I want to see how much damage you do. A one. <laughs> see, I'm not. <laughs> 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 you do exactly as much damage as you needed to to shut down the block. <laughs> that sounds like a does not waste energy. The block, you know, encloses in on itself, and you know, you see like this tiny, this tiny point of darkness, and then it goes Poink, and it disappears. Hmm. So um, that was that was the turn for uh, for Abigail and Kane, and Bigdis will be facing the thing here in a second. Teapot. Um, Teapot's gonna come down and try to strangle this guy. All right. Um, is there any uh, boon for being undetected and attacking him? Uh, yeah, I will say you can you can make this with two boons. Okay, okay then. Um, right. So that'd be an 18. All right. So you definitely get... Because you only add one of the boons, right? Yes. So you get that around his neck. Okay. And how much damage do you do? Uh, that would be three points of damage. All right. He is choking, but definitely not dead by any means. And... Dun, dun, dun. So, since two of you have failed your checks, um, those people are going to be able to take fast turns on you before we start regular turns. <laughs> Bring it on, Boney. So, first, yeah, we'll go with the undead uh, creature. And it is going to reach out for Vigdis. And let's see. So, it has a, a pitted. Uh, sword, and it is going to swing that sword. Ooh, with a boon! Holy crap! So yeah, that is a twenty-three to hit. That <laughs> definitely hits. <is. laughs> yeah, Who Vigdis is? <laughs> and Vigdis takes five points of damage from the sword. Nothing. 
<laughs> it's nothing. So that was him. And then this is happening like as you're dropping over and, and getting the Father of Shadows um, teapot um, because because uh, Fringe messed with the, uh, you know, screwed up her stealth check. This is happening right. simultaneously. So the Father of Shadows sees her and can react to her, and then you start choking him. So <laughs> what he does is... Um, Bequeath the dungeon to Fringe. Declare her queen of the darkness <laughs> and drop to one knee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, he is going to um, he is going to cast Nightfall Blade because it's a the area. And that is a good thing for him to cast. Nightfall. Sounds like a healing spell. <laughs> <laughs> so he starts chanting and this this blade, the, this dagger-like shape, uh, congeals out of the shadows and shoots towards her. She squeals. <laughs> or no, it doesn't shoot towards you. It's in his hand. Oh, well, good. There's a dude on his back. <laughs> so. Uh, da -da -da. Oh, he gets that too. So that is a 19 to hit French. Yeah, my clothing will not protect from that. You are in an area of shadow, so it does extra damage. Sweet. So the blade does seven points of damage to Fringe. Okay. Ouch. That's a lot. So I take seven wounds. Is that how that works? Yes, yes. Well, I have two, I still got two health, so I'm not dead. <laughs> so now, with our uh, our party split in two different areas, we start the first regular turn. And who would like to take a fast turn? Fast turn, please. Fast turn. <laughs> Am I close enough? Oh, can I use my sling now on the skeleton? Is it still here? I Oh yeah, yeah. You're far. You're far enough away that you can use the sling, and close enough that you can hit it with the sling because you're in the same area. Or I could use my short sword if I want to get in melee. Or no. Yep. So, so the area that me and Teapot are in is with the King of Shadows and and just him. Yes. Yes. Okay. Then I will take a fast turn. over to be by where the people were at by the blot. I'm gonna fast action with my sling. That's agility, right? Instead of strength. Yep. Nice. Well, my fast turn is just to like run for cover from the King of Shadows. Okay. <laughs> Within medium range. Okay. So next turn I'll attack him, but this turn I just run for cover. So you're staying in the same area, you're just getting away. Yes. Okay. All right, so um, Kane Sling. Specifically, I stagger away like I've received a mortal wound and am walking off to die. Stagger, stagger. Just to be oh, cool. <laughs> 18. 18. Nice. The sling strikes true. And how much damage do you do? Oop, three points. All right. Hmm. Assuming that's not enough to take it down, I'm going to beam that uh, skelly thing as well. Or try to. All right. Yep. Uh, 17 hit. A 17 does hit. Nice. Ah, 13 points of damage. Nice. Wow. <laughs> oh, died. Bones shatter. <laughs> nice. there, there is a pile of bones left there on the ground. So, I wasn't yeah. trying to isolate it, but I guess that's not really necessary now. You could, I guess, if you wanted to. Uh, I stand over it, assuming that the shadows will attack next. <laughs> <laughs> so that is gone. Um... So, Teapot and Abigail. Teapot continues with the strangulation. All right. For three more points. Three more points. Um, Abigail, seeing that the threats near her are gone, uh, is going to uh, start running towards the altar. Okay. So, so did you want to take a slow turn and get there and be able to take an action? 
Um, I thought I had to go through two area two zones for that. So I was thinking I was going to take a slow turn next turn. Well, it would be there's the stream bed. Yeah, that would be yeah because you go through the stream bed and then to the altar. So yeah. So I'll take the fast action now, and then I'll take the slow next one next time. So that way, it. gotcha. I okay. can uh, take an action. That makes sense. Okay, so that was Abigail, and that was Teapot. Okay, so the Father of Shadows. Um, hmm. Okay, yeah, he's going to do that. Then. Uh, he is going to use an ability of his, and since there are shadows all over the place, which are moving unnaturally, he steps into the shadow and disappears by not taking Teapot with him. I move with him? Unfortunately, since it's magical movement, you do not automatically move with him. That's unfortunate. Sorcery! <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> so... Actually, I should clarify, it was everybody's turn. He didn't take the fast action. There's nobody else to take a slow action. So his slow action is he did that, and then he did that, but that takes his action, and he moved away. So he's in the same area with Teapot and Fringe, but he cannot take another action because he had to use his action to Shadow Walk. So that was his turn. So that's it for everybody, and time for the next turn. Who would like to take... A fast action this turn. The only people next to him are uh, are uh, Teapot and Fringe, or at how, least. How big was the um, the bony thing? The sword was that like human size or was that uh, bigger? Uh, it is. It's a regular sword. So I mean, it's yeah. It, it wouldn't look quite as ridiculous in your hand as the short sword, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, how many zones is it from where we are to um, where... I guess we don't know where the, the King of Shadows or whatever is right now. Yeah, you just so. know they headed towards the altar. So, But it's two areas, so if you took a slow turn, you could get there and you would be there for next turn. Okay. Wait, can we see him or not? Um, you can see the altar and you might be seeing people darting around and shadows moving. Because what I'm thinking is I, I, the overbear action is the one to just like tackle guys. Mm -hmm. And I can make my move while I'm doing this. So I could do a move and then I could do an overbear to try and like jump onto someone if I could see them. But I don't know if I see anybody. Um, yeah, I, I, you could. Yeah, I think you could reasonably see somebody. You, you know there's somebody there you could tackle. So you can do that as like you're on a slow turn, move over yep. and then overbear for your. So yeah, that would work. Okay, so I'll wait for a slow turn. So you'll wait for a slow turn. Um, the other thing to point out is, like, for example, like slings and uh, daggers are ranged weapons you can use within an area. But if you, um, if you take a distance shot, you can actually make an attack roll with a bane to reach an additional area. So people that have ranged attacks, you could technically try and attack him from where you're at now. Hmm. You'd just be taking a, an extra bane. But if I take a slow action and I can move one area, would I still have the bane? Or um, Oh, yeah. Actually, I'm sorry. You're two areas away, so you would have to be at least one area to do that because you're only getting one extra area. So, yeah, we'd have to take a slow action to do it. Right? That was my plan. Okay. So, Big Dis and Kane are taking slow actions. What about... And Abigail is already on her way there. She's taking a slow action. Um, I'll take a slow action, although I will remind you that I, I limped away as if I had been mortally wounded. Yes. <laughs> my cover. So I look like I'm like I'm edged up against a wall, just like holding over the wound, just like coughing up, trying to make it look like I'm coughing blood and barely holding on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll so take a slow turn. But okay, so you're taking a slow turn as well. Keep we'll up. Fast, okay. fast turn. Uh, he is going to try to reestablish, but now that he's there, it becomes a strength based thing, which is less likely to go well. Uh, however, a 13 would become a. Well, that'd be a 12. All right, and that is enough to defense. Reestablish the. So you fly back over and drop the groat over his neck again. <laughs> 
uh, and for a very consistent three points of damage. Um, <laughs> you will not be allowed to do this thing. I tell him very quietly. It's so creepy. <laughs> you whisper in his ear. Yeah, but he's very proper the way he says it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, oh, yeah, man. He needs to get his mask off. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he doesn't. <laughs> we need to prevent that. I, I think he is going to be um, he's going to be taking a slow turn so that he can attempt to get Teapot off his neck and pull the mask off. We'll see how well that goes. So, well, that was Teapot's turn. So everyone else is taking slow turns. Um, Abigail, if you you know make your movement, you can now take an action if you want to get next to him and try and stab him. Yeah, with the lovely sword. Although I'm still fighting at one bane, right? Yes. All right. Thankfully, I checked. It's a finesse, so at least I'm not taking too many. Hey, that's a good roll. Um, eighteen for on the d twenty two from the bane, so that's a sixteen to hit. Wow. Yes. All right, and only two damage. Yeah, it was two damage that he didn't have on him before. Yeah. It's like, uh, you need to stop this, young man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the heck else to call it. <laughs> young creature. Horrible thing. Dude. <laughs> Papa of the shadows. <laughs> All right. So, um, he is injured and still has a clockwork flying around his head. Um, so there's that. That's Abigail. Um, Big this, you can attempt to tackle him, and Kane, you can, uh, Kane and friends, you can do whatever you're going to do as well. Okay. Kane can attack with a ranged weapon with one, with one Bane, if you would like. Okay. I just uh, reread Overbear, and it's not. I'm not tackling the guy. I'm trying to like knock him aside. And if I roll twenty okay. or higher, I knock him down. Okay. And prone targets. Everyone attacking them gets one uh, boon on it. So, gotcha. We can knock this guy in his ass. So I get a, a bane because of the shadows, right? Yes. Okay. So, let's see here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's not good. So I'm going to spend my fortune to uh, to make it at least as well. It's not helpful if I push him in. There's nothing I could push him into that would really... Not really. Yeah, so uh, fuck it, I'll take the... So I scream like an idiot and go running across and then, like, <laughs> miss him by about two yards. Ah! Ah! You go running, oh, and oh. he's, like, choking on a teapot around his neck, and he sees you coming and just kind of, like, sidesteps, and you can just keep going straight. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, that was big diss. Uh... Kane, did you want to take the range shot? Oh, I just somehow I rolled the wrong die. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're playing with a handicap. Yeah. <laughs> no, no kidding. So I got an 11. Oh, nice. All right. So, oh, an 11, unfortunately. No, that does hit him. That nice. just barely hits him. Oh, only one point of damage from a sling stone. <laughs> So yeah, the the sling stone was coming straight at him, and it was going to hit him solidly. And Teapot's still riding him around, and he just kind of turns, and it like hits him in the shoulder. <laughs> <sighs> All right, and Fringe, what would you like to do? Uh, well, I can see the King of Shadows, and other people are engaging him. Yes. Uh, are there ready to actions in Shadows of the Demon Lord? Um, you basically you have um. You have triggered action. Triggered. If there's yeah. a thing, you basically say what's going to trigger the action, and that does it. Plus, there's also class features that use triggered actions for things. So, All right. Yeah. So next turn, I will be taking a slow action, but between now and then, if he uh, manages to wound one of my opponents, I will hit him with my sling. Okay. Wound one of your opponents. Wait a minute. We're not your friends? <laughs> I'm sorry. One of my friends. One of my friends. One of my friends. <laughs> Fringe was just thinking if anyone finds out about the extra coppers. That's <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, you come over to check my wound, and there's just like a big sack of thirty coppers there. I'm just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Okay. So, um, so for his action, first he's going to try and get Teapot off of his neck. 
which is an attack roll with a bane. All right. Ooh, that is only a nine. So he does not get teapot off of his neck. Nice. Um, but as he's trying to pull the thing away, he does yank the mask off. So <laughs> he yanks the mask off. Everyone give me a... Ooh, and this one is actually horrifying. So everyone give me a uh, will check. Come on. With a bane or no no bane? Uh, no bane. Yeah, uh, Vigdis failed. <laughs> <laughs> I have an iron will. Every time I roll will, it's awesome. <laughs> I rolled a 19. All right. So because he is horrifying, um, not only are you frightened, so you take a D6 or you, you take a bane, an additional bane because you're frightened, but you also take a point of sanity damage. Yeah. Is 13 good enough? Yes. Okay. Do we need it? What do we need? Uh, 10. Oh, okay, I just made it that. <laughs> you know, in, in fiction, I, I think that Vignus isn't so much freaked out by the uh, the mask. He's just so disappointed that he fucked up so badly on that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, charge, what so. was that tackle? That tackle looked so good, and and he was just like by. banging his head against the staff. Stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> Bad Vignus. <laughs> oh dear. Oh man. Okay, so now that was his turn, and. He can't do anything else useful, so we'll go to the top of the next turn. Nice. And um, who would like to take a pass turn? Uh, Vigus would. Abby will. I'm, I'm going to take a slow. Uh, I already declared I was going to take a slow. So. Okay. So I'm going to try and recover my honor here. <laughs> Only a 19, so it's a 22. Wow. And, uh, oh, and I will spend my fortune point, so I'll make one of my, I rolled a six and a three for damage. I'll okay. uh, spend the fortune point to make that three a six, so I do 13 points of damage to him. Nice. Let's see so if that puts a dent in. When uh, Vigdus does that, um, he tears into this guy because he needs to, he needs to prove himself. And he just really, really, the, the shame of, of uh, embarrassment uh, flows through him and strengthens his arm, and you basically just tear this guy in half when you hit him. <laughs> <laughs> so he drops to the ground. Teapot, you can follow him if you want. But <laughs> uh, Teapot's going to uh, let go of the garrote once the head is no longer attached, and then apologize profusely that everyone had to see that. <laughs> um, when the mask is uh, dropped aside it's very hard to you know these cultists once they reveal the horrid visage it's really hard to make out any details because of all the squirming shadows beneath their skin so you can't really tell what this guy would have looked like when he wasn't doing that um, but other than that <laughs> the other thing you hear is Vigdis stomping around the room, screaming out challenges to the shadows in trollish. <laughs> yeah, you um, notice, uh, oddly, like all of the candles are still flickering, so there's still those shadows, but the shadows are not quite as deep as they were, and they seem to be. Everything feels a little bit more logical. It's a little less like there's unnaturalness to the shadows and the darkness that are darting around here now at this point. All right, we need to we need to search bodies here. Um, Fringe dislikes pain, so she's drinking her healing potion now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, Vegas took damage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Vigdis took a bit of damage. Uh, yeah. Abby will uh, toss Vigdis his uh, her healing potion as well. So the uh, the father of shadows had a rapier on him. Which he didn't use because he had a shadow blade. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm more looking for identifying things, signet rings, uh, the holy symbols, the whole nine yard. Um, you don't see anything on the guy at the moment, but there does appear to be stuff near the altar. Hmm. The last time Vigdis saw something like this, he tipped it over. So you guys can feel free to stop him from trashing this this stuff. Um, we might want to investigate this, Vigdis. So Abby is oh. going to 
try to calm the uh, Jotun down. There, yeah. there is a, a, a big cauldron like there was in the church, but this one doesn't seem to have boiled remains so much as there's a black tarry substance in it. Mm. Does it smell like the water did? It smells similar to the water, but worse. Well, we found our poison. Is it next to the stream bed? Um, yeah, the altar is next to the, the stream bed, too. Uh. And, and just to check this, he cast a spell, and it wasn't like a Wraith Shadow Blade, so there is no remaining blade to be taken. Yeah, it dispersed back into the shadows okay. when he died. Um, let's go ahead and search around the altar. What are we? What are we finding there? I'm looking for anything from the Church of the New God. Um, his any any sort of uh, reliquary type stuff that you There's would use. A lot of things from the people in town that appear to be burnt and uh, and desecrated. But there's also um, there's a very nice uh, very nice purse. Um, there's there's various chemicals used for uh, rendering human bodies down into other substances. <laughs> You're not quite sure what these chemicals would do if you spilled them on yourself, so you know there's that. Mm. And there is something wrapped in a very fine black silk bundle. Here's the dead baby. <laughs> uh, you know, I think we should open the bundle and the purse up. I'll, I'll poke up the bundle with my uh, my staff. The, the bundle doesn't move. I yeah, will open the bundle. The bundle is a book. And oh boy. The the book. The anyone that can read the title of the book says Apocalypticon. Apocalypticon. Well, I will put that in his backpack. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to have a book burning. In the purse, <laughs> there were five uh, five silver shillings. Um. Hmm. All right. Um, I'm keeping the purse, but I'll give a, each of the other party members a sh silver shilling. Mm -hmm. And I get to keep one. Hey, that works out. Uh, <laughs> well, that is not the logic that Friend uses when, when <laughs> she finds coins. <laughs> Teapot will pass on the silver. Um, I have a book. <laughs> Yes, you have a book. You you definitely, if you handle the book, you definitely get the feeling that this book could be very beneficial to anyone that, that became a spellcaster in some manner. Mm. It just, it's, and, uh, and it's not just, you know, it's not just a hunch. It's like you feel the magical power kind of resonating in this thing when you're holding it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, that's uh, interesting. <laughs> Not helpful, but interesting. <laughs> so, at this point, uh, did you guys want to try and make your way back out? Yeah. The thing is, is I, I have a poker term that I have to order pizzas for, so I kind of oh, no, can't. Yeah. I, no, I was... We're just about... We're about five minutes over, so I was just getting ready to wrap it up now. So. Okay, cool. I don't mean to be a downer. I'm having fun. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I plan to wrap it up by 12, so I was just a little bit a little bit long, so... Pretty close. Um, I say... Um, is there... If there's another bull, we've got somebody over here. We've got plenty of heart's blood. Well, actually, when you get back to the Maze of Shadows, it's gone. Ooh. Can, did we, like, somehow clean up the well, or no? Did we not be able to clean up the um, stuff? Oh, it's probably going to eventually, you know, it'll thin out because I mean it's it's a stream, so things keep moving. So if it's not, you know, if people aren't continually putting stuff in there, it's probably not going to continually be bad. All right, good. Probably within a day or two, it'll be fine. People downstream, you know, getting this water probably will get a little sick, but not like out sick. All right, good. So if you um, come back out of there, um, 
waiting for you in the town, you see, uh, uh, Mother Bastion, and she is thrilled that all of you are still alive. She is completely certain that this is a sign that you are all servants of the one true God, and that from this point on, I will come back to you when I need things done that the new God has has cared for us. I hope I can count on each and every one of you because I know that his visage shines upon each and every one of you as special servants of his. Oh dear. So, do any of you have any specific thing that you say back to Mother Bastion when she says this? Um, Teapot will kind of chuckle and due to an unfortunate role when he gained that corruption, um, as he chuckles, you distinctly hear the sounds of crying children come from within his torso. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no. Uh, a a a Abigail is just going to go. Um, thank you, uh, Mother Bastion. Um, can you help us? Is there any way we can get some help cleaning up the what's left of the town? Um, she says um, she's going to give you a letter to introduce yourself in uh, into town. Uh, if you would like to head to the, there's one city in this region. The, the keeps are basically towns as well, but the city is basically the the main place. And if you go to Father Stone of the Church of the Martyrs Radiant Blood, he will make sure that yeah, you get a chance to uh, rest and recover there. He'll find you a place in the city for the time being to kind of give you a chance to catch your breath and, and figure out what's going in. And then they'll look into what they can do for the town. Okay. Yeah, Kane is definitely willing to let, you know, Mother Bastion help us out. And anytime she needs anything, certainly, you know, come to us. He's, he, honestly, he's surprised to be alive. He thought for sure this would be his final. <laughs> you know, but since it succeeded, then obviously they have more things to do. There you go. That That is obvious. That's the best sign of fate. If things work out the right way, then you must have done the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> the way the weird works. Yes. Entirely okay with working within the church still. Okay. She, she is thrilled that all of you have accepted your position as as uh, agents and instruments of the one true God. And she keeps like, it, like you guys feel like there's, there, the way she keeps saying that, you're not quite sure <laughs> about this whole situation here. Uh, I'm not sure that she really is all on the up and up. <laughs> I, I, like, just the way she's talking just bothers me. <laughs> Friends would get really close to her and, and then just like look up at her face and like get really close and then say, Have a ba ba, ba ba and then just tongues for like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just, and at some point, at some point, uh, Abby's going to uh, try to stop Fringe. <laughs> <laughs> try to calm fringe down. It's <laughs> like I, 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 I truly appreciate your uh, enthusiasm and the spirit that has moved you. Teapot will continue laughing, and the children will continue crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the best mark of darkness ever. <laughs> okay, so just as a big meta thing between this session and the next. Um, there's there's little things when you pick your careers that that kind of detail how you picked your careers, or you can roll it randomly, and we can do that between sessions. Um, I'll go ahead because I don't know if everybody has it. I'll go ahead and roll the downtime and let you know what happened in your downtime because fun things can happen in downtime. <laughs> Please don't and, die. And we're yeah, we're basically going to pick up a year after this adventure, okay. and we'll work okay. that out in, in the uh, in the community. The only other cogent thing that I need to ask is, did any of the alms box make it to charity from here, or did you guys keep all of it? Um, honestly, I don't feel good keeping an alms box. While, yeah, while yeah. we are refugees, too, I, I can't see Abby taking any of the money, so she would actually be pro-helping the helping people who are less fortunate, even okay. though she's going to be in, destitute by the time she gets there. In Vigus's mind, this is plunder. So <laughs> so you're taking your cut. He's, he's totally okay with taking it, yeah. 
Okay. This and is what, what the strong do. And, and what about uh, what about Kane? Um, Kane will pass on it. He doesn't seem like he really needs it at this point. I wasn't even going to the church to steal the alms box to begin with. So, so basically, um, Fringe got thirty. And, Hold on, Fringe, and Fringe doesn't publicly the other twenty. <laughs> Fringe will go on a long tirade about how like it would be disgusting and terrible <laughs> to keep the money, and tries to make Figus feel bad, and <laughs> of course keep her thirty coins and not talk <laughs> about it. But she will not publicly take a share. Yes. So the two of you, since none of it made it to charity, the two of you that kept the coppers will gain one corruption each. <laughs> but again, this is not... I only get one corruption for that? Yeah, this <laughs> makes... I should get two corruption for that. In the context of Vindus's culture, though, this makes total sense. Oh, yeah. I, corrupt I, this is plunder. I understand, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still. I guess it's a corrupt culture. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so You're the wrong area of the world. We each got one shilling, and then what was the total haul? Um, uh, you each got one shilling from the cultist, and then there, no one else took a share, so you get twenty more, uh, twenty more copper. Nice, Vigdis. Thanks you for your, um, <laughs> your devotion to your god. Although, honestly, if Vigdis becomes the meat shield, he's probably going to need more coin for weapons and armor than other people anyway. With yeah, Jotun, everything costs twice as much. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um, I'm going to wrap that up here. Um, if you guys want to, you know, let me know if there's a thing on the chart or if you want to roll randomly for how you got your, 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 uh, your career when you move into that. And then I will post all of the, the downtime things in the community. Thank you all for playing. I had a I had a really good time. You guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it. No, oh, thanks for running it, Jared. Yeah, yeah thanks. thanks, Jared. As always. I, all right, thanks, guys. Thank you guys for playing, I appreciate. It. Thanks, everybody. If you're watching this, I appreciate that. And I'm going to sign off now, and we'll see you next Saturday. Sounds good. See you yep. guys. Bye.